Hello and welcome to our special coverage of the Gambian presidential election live on the Gambian radio and television service. I am Abdullah C. This is a momentous and historic election with six candidates hoping to secure the trust of Gambians for the next five years. Hopefully, by the end of the night, we'll know if the incumbent, His Excellency President Adam Oparo, will stay at State House or will one of his five challengers be knocking at his door. Whatever happens, one thing is clear the Gambia will win. And when the Gambia wins, no one loses. GRTS election night special, the Gambia votes, 2021 presidential elections, from voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates, as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term, facing UDP's Usainu Dabo. GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esa Baipal. Follow the day's polling activities on GRT's TV and radio, as well as vote counting and all breaking issues on election night special, live on GRT's, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls with expert analysis, breaking news and results in quick time from the IEC. We're also streaming all election activities across our social media platforms. Join us on GRT's Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for access to the 2021 presidential elections. Election night special. The Gambia votes. As usual, we are here with a team of specialists to dissect and analyze the results as they come in. We have uh, Baba, S, uh, Baba S. E. Suare, a former director of social statistics, Hasum Sise, renowned historian and author, and Kadib Fofana, a gender specialist. My colleague S. Aso will be looking at the dashboard to look at the live updates. Yes, sir, what do you have? Thank you very much, uh, Abdullahi. It's a warm welcome to this uh, great night for the Gambia. Like Abdullahi said, we have uh, put together comprehensive data on the 2021 election and as well previous elections that were held in this country. So as you can see on your screen, we have uh, six candidates uh, in the running in the 2021 presidential elections. We'll be looking at some of these key facts later on. But in the meantime, we will begin by looking at uh, the six candidates, beginning with the incumbent uh, Adam Abaro. Adam Abaro was born on the 15th of uh, February 1965. He's age 56. He was born in Manka Mankunda and that is in the Opa River region. So just a brief bio of uh, the incumbent. His Excellency Adam Abaro is running for the uh, for re-election for a second term. He came into power after defeating long-term leader Yaya Jame in 2016. We know in that a very interesting election. Now, uh, President Barros NPP is a new party backed by a group of other political parties, including some uh, former independent presidential aspirants. And the parties, though, includes the, N the PPP, NRP, and uh, uh, the NCP. So uh, that's the president uh, for the incumbent, Adam Barrow. And then you have uh, Usainu Dabo. Usainu Dabo is the leader of the United Democratic Party. He's a standard bearer of the UDP. And as you can see, he was born on the 8th of August, 1948. So he's age uh, 73. So Usainu is the eldest among all these uh, candidates uh, in the running. He was born in Dobo. Dobo is in the Central River region south. Mr. Dabo has been the presidential candidate for the UDP since 1996. Uh, this is his fifth attempt at the presidency. He lost to former president Yahya Jame in uh, 1996, in 2001, in 2006, and uh, in 2011. 
Dawo is a lawyer with over 40 years of experience. We move on and look at the uh, next candidate tonight. Esa Mbaifal is the only independent candidate uh, in the race. Mr. Mbaifal was uh, born on the 11th of March, 1966. He's age 55. His play of birth is a banjul. Now, Mr. Fall was the lead counsel at the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission. He's running as an independent uh, candidate, uh, like I said. So, I mean, he is one of the uh, new people, as far as the candidates are concerned, uh, that are attempting uh, the presidency. So he's among two uh, candidates that are in the running for the first time. So we move on and look at uh, Mama Kande. Mama Kande is the standard bearer of the uh, GDC, the Gambia Democratic Congress. He was born on the 12th of uh, July, 1965, age 56. His place of birth is Sare Birom. Sare Birom is in the uh, Upper River region. He comes from the same region with uh, the incumbent, uh, Adama Bar. So we look at Mr. Kande's profile. Kande has been an MP for Jimara in the Upper River region for a decade. In 2016, uh, he launched a bit which was very, uh, which was unsuccessful uh, for the presidency, and this is his second attempt. So that is uh, Mama Kande for you. So we have one of the other two first timers, uh, Abdullah Ibrahim Ajame. Abdullah Ibrahim Ajame uh, was born on the 12th of January, uh, 1969. So he's the youngest among the contestants tonight. His place of birth is Brikama in the West Coast region. We will briefly look at uh, his bio, Abdullah. Let's look at. Uh, Mr. Jamez's uh, bio very shortly. And we also have uh, Hanifa Salah. Hanifa Salah is also the leader of the uh, PDOIS. But before we look at Salah, let's try to hover over uh, Mr. Jamez. Mr. Jamez, as you can see, is a former Director General of the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. His uh, National Unity Party is a newcomer to Gambian politics. So uh, that is Mr. Jamez for you. He is the youngest in tonight's race. We also have uh, Hanifa Babakar Sala. Alifa Sala is the standard bearer of the uh, People's Democratic Organization for Independence and Socialism, DOI. Mr. Sala was born uh, on the 6th of uh, April, and that was in 1965. Uh, Sala was born in Serekunda, and he is uh, the lawmaker for uh, Serekunda. And Sala is the National Assembly member, like I said, for Serekunda, that is on the screen right there. His party, Doi, has been contesting in Gambian elections for so many years, uh, well before the 1994 coup they have been in Gambian politics. So the candidates for you tonight, so these are the candidates uh, running for number one Marina Panel. So let's look at some of the key facts for tonight. The Independent Electoral Commission has been working, putting together, I mean, uh, data for 2021. And uh, looking at these key facts, you look at the number of registered voters for the 2021 presidential elections. We have uh, 962,157 registered voters. And uh, more of this number, or, or, or these registered voters are women, 545,318. And that constitutes 57 percent of the people that have been voting today so we will be uh, looking at these demographics later so the male category 416,839 it accounts for uh, 43 percent of the total number of registered uh, voters so we have seven administrative areas 53 constituencies 1,554 polling stations this is where Gambians have been uh, casting their ballots throughout the day so tonight We'll have you, uh, we'll be get, getting you the leaderboard. Over there, you'll be seeing how the respective candidates will be performing. Once we start getting the results, we will see it will be updating automatically right there. So here too, we'll be showing you how the candidates will be performing. So the administrative areas also on your screen. So I like, we'll come back and look at uh, the previous election in 2016, how those candidates performed and compare and contrast that to 2021. Yes, sir. It couldn't be said in a better way. Thank you very much. We'll get back to you. Uh, before we go to the panelists, just a reminder, we'll cut to our team of announcers in the national languages as well as to the IEC as we get the results. Uh, gentlemen and lady, welcome again. So, Hasum, look at the historical context of elections in the Gambia. What can you tell us? Thank you very much. Um, good evening, dear listeners. Um, like I said, it's a momentous day. Um, from this record, and this is the 17th, 17, that Gambians have been called to vote in multi-party democratic elections. 
and I always underline the word multi party. That is 17 times since when? From a year? 1947. Since 1947, this is the 17th time that Gambians have been called to elevate their leaders. Um, in the multi party in such a Now, I always underline the uh, phrase of multi party. Mm. You know, because even in North Korea, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, they do. They vote. They vote. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what makes the Gambian situation unique mm -hmm. in Africa, and in fact in the world, is that we have yes, okay. so always had the opportunity for multi party elections, really. Mm -hmm. used to it. That sometimes I wonder, I mean, if it is not the Gambian. That should be the notice. What do you mean by democracy? The Gambia is the longest-running multi-party democracy in Africa. Yes. Yes. I mean, I mean the Gambia um, is the longest-running no. in Black Africa. Since 1947, we have been doing that. So it's an African record, um, like drop the line in that. Also have had a unique touch in it. I know you are going to ask about that later, you know, the Marvel mm -hmm. and Barrel and Bell mm -hmm. and Sordos. Are we still the only country using that system? <laughs> it's unique with Gambia. Mm. It's patent and unique with Gambia. Yes. Mm. 51 and 54 elections. Mm. We use ballot paper. Mm. Yeah. For those elections, we are only for Patos, for Bacow, and Serepuna. When you say Patos, you mean Bandit? We are Bandit, yes. Mm. And for Finance, it's Serepuna. You know, it's called the Abuko Bridge mm -hmm. elections in which you know, ballot paper was used. Mm -hmm. Because the, the British thought in this urban, uh, you know, conglomeration, uh, there were, I mean. Uh, you know, oh, 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 okay, Hasan, we'll get back to you. We're just going for a short break. We'll get back to you. Short break. Mm -hmm. GRTS election night special, the Gambia votes, 2021 presidential elections, from voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates, as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term facing UDP's Usainu Dabo. GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esam Baipal. Follow the day's polling activities on GRT's TV and radio, as well as vote counting and all breaking issues on election night special, live on GRT's, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls with expert analysis, breaking news and results in quick time from the IEC. We're also streaming all election activities across our social media platforms. Join us on GRT's Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for access to the 2021 presidential elections. Election night special. The Gambia votes. GRT's election night special. The Gambia votes. 22. Welcome back. Hazum, let's pick it from there, the marble voting system. Well, yes. Um, like I was saying before, mm -hmm. um, in the 47 elections, mm -hmm. the 54 elections, and the 1951 um, you know, elections, um, the ballot paper was used mm -hmm. um, because these elections only concern um, electing members to the Legislative Council mm -hmm. for Bathos, Serekunda, and Bakao. You know, what was called, I mean, Combo, mm -hmm. I mean, Tuba Banco, mm -hmm. or, you know, I mean, the Combo, I mean, in St. Mary's, I mean, division. Mm -hmm. And the British thought that there was, you know, sufficient, you know, literacy mm -hmm. in these areas to be able to use paper, uh, you know, ballot paper. Mm -hmm. Now, in 1960, a new constitution came into being, mm -hmm. and universal adult suffrage mm -hmm. was introduced, meaning every Gambian, from Koyana to Katong, 
um, age 21 and above mm -hmm. could now vote and be voted for. Mm -hmm. So that um, put um, the election organizers in a quandary. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure, mm -hmm. I mean, voting, mm -hmm. um, you know, fair and free, you know, elections, um, where the illiteracy rate at the time was less than five percent, it's very low, mm -hmm. and that was the reason why the marble um, barrel bell mm -hmm. and sort of system mm -hmm. as we have today you know was introduced and it is really patently gambian mm -hmm. um the first you know barrels mm -hmm. were manufactured by the pwd you know the public works department mm -hmm. you know at their banjul you know i mean yard mm -hmm. um, in march 1960 just you know three months before the, I mean, I mean, first general elections of 1960, mm -hmm. and since then, mm -hmm. this has been the, um, you know, nature, mm -hmm. or, or this has been the way mm -hmm. that Gambians have voted. Mm -hmm. And like I told your colleagues this morning, um, in 2016, um, it was this system that we used to change the government. You know, government. Mm -hmm. And earlier even, mm -hmm. it was in 62, mm -hmm. it was the same system mm -hmm. in which. I mean, the PPP defeated, mm -hmm. uh, you know, PRG is UP. Mm -hmm. So it is um, quite resilient mm -hmm. and, 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 and very, very effective, you know, effective mm -hmm. the voting system. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, thank you. We will get back to you. Uh, Kadi Fofana, what is the importance of women's participation in elections, especially this one? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. C. Mm -hmm. And it's a pleasure for me to be here. And a great pleasure for me to sit here and talk about um, women uh, being a woman. Um, we play a very important role in, in, in politics, mm -hmm. although um, we, we never represented as we should. Mm -hmm. uh, but we... So you think you are not well represented? <laughs> yes, we'll mm -hmm. come to that later. Mm -hmm. uh, but we make leaders mm -hmm. from the home, to institutions, uh, we groom leaders. That is a uh, part of our nature uh, because if you look at society, our society is very, very patriarchal. Mm. And um, a few, many, many years, few years or many years ago, uh, the best place for the woman was the home. And that explains why we played uh, uh, very much important roles in making leaders, mm. most especially political leaders because um, the woman's uh, um, nurturing nature, uh, when we see people in need, uh, we give them a shoulder to lean on, we support them um, as, as much as we can for them to get to uh, wherever they want to uh, get to. In, in terms of politics, and if you look at the demographics, especially the, the sex ratio, uh, you have more women in the Gambia than, than men. About 52% of the population are all women. So we definitely, it is the women who make leaders. And when it comes to politics, if you go to political ra rallies, uh, majority of, of, of those supporters are women. And then you go to the polling stations, you see women queuing with their babies on their back. You see all women being escorted to the polling station uh, just to give uh, support to these uh, political leaders in order for them to achieve their objectives. So uh, I think um, because of our nurturing uh, nature, we play a very, very pivotal role in making leaders in general. Mm. And we have had uh, three vice presidents as women. Is that significant enough? Yes. Um, Yes, we, we appreciate that a lot. Um, we have achieved so much in terms of women empowerment as far as the Gambia is concerned. Uh, when, we, when some of us were going to high school, that was not the case uh, because I wouldn't be able to say much about Sadawda's rule. But, uh, but then during Jambe's rule, uh, I think a lot of women empowerment happened and uh, that has continued over time. Uh, we had three vice president, female vice president, the current vice president is a woman and, and I think that is a plus for us. But as we go along um, during the discussion, I, we would like to demand more because that is not enough. There are areas that women definitely need to be represented and we are not fully represented. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Baba Suarez, if you look at the data on the board here, what do you make of it as a statistician? Uh, 
the number of registered voters and the other things. Yeah, in fact, uh, I... Mm. Go to the current data. Mm. Yeah, this is the 2015. Mm. Go to 2021. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, the 2020 election, the number of registered voters mm. increased to 962,157. Mm. Okay? When it was around 800 and something in 2016. Mm. Okay, so there has been an increase in the number of registered voters. Mm. Okay, but if you deeply look into the data, particularly by region, mm -hmm. okay, you find out that in certain regions, like for instance in Banjo, mm -hmm. see, there is a decline in the number of registered voters in Banjo. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think even in the in the Brikama from well, the Kanifi municipality, mm -hmm. there is a decline in the number of registered voters. voters. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, this is simply because mm -hmm. uh, people are moving out of Banjul. Mm -hmm. You see, that has been the trend for very many years now. People are moving out of Banjul mm -hmm. to KMC, Kanifi, mm -hmm. okay? In fact, in the previ previously. Uh, even if you go to Gibos in the census, the, period, the previous census, the past census, the population of Banjul has been declining mm. simply because Banjul is an island. There is not much room for expansion. Okay? So, in other words, the, the city is uh, saturated. People have to leave out mm. to the neighboring Kanifing municipality. Mm. That was why. Banjul's population was declining, and uh, similarly, the number of registered voters has been declining over the years. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Carnifing has been increasing, mm -hmm. but recently we've seen that Carnifing also is, has reached its maximum. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's saturated. So now there's the movement mm -hmm. of people, both from Banjul and Carnifing, to the neighboring uh, West Coast. Bekama, mm -hmm. West Coast region, particularly the Combo North and the Combo South. Mm -hmm. You will see that, that, that uh, the number, even in the, in, in, in the census, mm -hmm. the population of uh, Bekama has increased more than all other regions in the country. And even in the, uh, uh, look at, looking at the uh, 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 number of registered by, by region or by local government area. Can we cut to that data? Bikama right now is about 300 and something thousand. It's 359,451. When it was 200 and, I think 280 something thousand in 2016. Okay? So it has been increasing. Whereas KMC and Banjul are de uh, have declined simply because people are moving out. You see, there is no much room for expansion, mm -hmm. in, even in KMC right now. So people are forced to move out to the neighboring uh, combos, particularly Combo North, Combo South, and uh, even in, the, in combo, combo East. Okay, what impact would you think that would have on the election results? Pardon? What impact would that have on the results, the election results? Well, uh, uh, oh. Its impact in the, in, in, mm. in the result, in, in, on the result is actually, uh, we've seen that, uh, for instance, uh, many people will say, okay, uh, the regions that are declining in their population and in their number of registered voters, okay, uh, they may cease, for instance, low turnout mm. in the number of voters, okay? Mm. People may migrate from Banjul, KMC to mm. other regions, mm. U.S. Coast, okay? When they are already registered in Banjul, mm. okay? come pooling or uh, uh, voting, they are in, in the combos where they are registered in Banjul. So it may be difficult, maybe they may feel that traveling from the combos to go and vote in Banjul, mm. okay? may be cumbersome for them, mm -hmm. they may relax, they may not vote, so as a result, they may be the number of voters for the turnout will be low. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Based on your experience, when turnout is low, who does it favor? Is it the incumbent or the opposition? Well, I the, the magnitude of the turnout actually does not affect it, 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 it does not affect whether the incumbent or the mm. the, 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 the opposition. Okay? Mm. Whether that the turnout has no I don't think it has any relationship mm. with the the incumbent or the the, the opposition, opposition candidates. Mm. Does not have any effect on mm. on, 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 on the on their, on their performance. Mm. Okay, uh, Hazum, yes. we, we fast track it to the nomination process uh, for this election. We had 26 people taking nomination papers. I think 21 of them filed, 15 were rejected, and six were accepted. What does that show? Is the Gambia's democracy growing stronger? Or? Yes. Mm. In fact, all the indications are that our multi party system mm. is maturing. Mm. Um, to start with, mm. um, in 2021, we have um, six candidates. That's the highest so far. Mm. Um, in 1992, yeah. there are five presidential in hopefuls. Mm. So, um, you know, our, our, our multi party system is maturing, it's growing. Mm. Now, uh, another indication um, on that. It's really the sheer amount of effort mm. that each of these six candidates you know, has expended mm. um, on the campaign. You know, I mean, I mean, like the mediatization of the campaign, for example, is unique. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, this has been a really heavily mediatized campaign. Mm. Uh, you know that also is another, I mean, significant you know step forward, mm. uh, you know, for for Gambian democracy. Mm. I'm saying this because um, in 1960, in the general elections, mm. uh, there was no radio, mm. you know, there was no broadcasting service. Okay, so you know the PPP, the United Party, you know the Democratic, uh, I mean, party, the Congress Party, mm. really had to depend on griots. Mm -hmm. and what was called you know broadcast talks. Mm. You have your megaphone, you know, you rig it up on a tree and then start you know talking and people will come out okay so, um you know um it was only in 1962 uh, you know a few days after the gambia you know was established mm. that um you know our elections you know started to have radio coverage and the you know candidates you know were afforded the opportunity to i mean broadcast their messages uh, you know to gambians you know through radio mm. so i think um all in all um, our democracy is becoming a, a more mature mm. and more inclusionary also. Mm. But even if you look at the you know, age mm. uh, you know, bracket of the candidates, mm. I think it's quite healthy. Mm. You, you know, there's this you know, dose of, I mean, I mean the septuagenarian, mm. uh, you know, a dose you know, of the independence generation. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I think that too. So it know, has become more open for all ages. Oh yes, oh yes. I mean, I mean, really, there's no ageism in, in this, in this, in this election. And I think that's also um, is something to be proud of. Mm. Uh, you know, is uh, you know, I mean, I'm very, very inclusionary. You know, very participatory. Mm. And now my uh, neighbor here has, been, uh, you know, was commenting on the mm. participation of women, mm. and I fully agree with her. I mean, really, um, it is to the credit of this country mm. that there has never been. A deliberate attempt, as far as the historical record is concerned, mm -hmm. um, to prevent or to stifle I mean, women's participation, mm -hmm. you know, through uh, you know canon, like through laws mm -hmm. or, 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 or or I mean like obstacles you know, that we are deliberately put in their place. So by law, women have always been free. Mm -hmm. Gambian women have been voting earlier than mm -hmm. some women in the European Union. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot name countries, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but there are so many countries in the EU, mm. Gambian women had the vote mm. earlier than those countries. Mm. As far back as 1931, mm. when the Battlestown Council was established, the women were becoming councillors, mm. like Hannah Mahoney, mm. uh, you know, Sir Laura's first in law. Mm. Uh, you know, later women like Hannah Foster, uh, you know, got elected as, you know, councillors. Mm. Now, even with the advent of multi-party, I mean, politics in the 50s, you had strong women 
Mm. You know, that's how this uh, phenomenon of the Yai company started. Mm. The Yai the Yai of the PPP. Mm. These were women who sponsored, who financed these parties. Because unfortunately, most of the political leaders at the time, like Sadauda, like Reverend JC Fai, they were too poor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to really, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, like on the right, the activities of their parties. Mm -hmm. So you had a woman like Hannah Foster, uh, you know, for the Democratic Party, I mean, I mean, um, Aja Fatou Ninjata, you know, for the PPP, they really investing heavily mm -hmm. to support, uh, you know, party activities. Okay, great. Uh, Esa, yes, you, you've profiled the candidates. Can you tell us more about their policies? Yes, uh, well, we'll be looking at the uh, policies, Abdullah. We just wanted to bring uh, some of the uh, number of registered voters in the respective administrative areas because we are talking uh, with him with regards to uh, how West Coast or the become administrative area is the biggest out of the uh, entire uh, uh, seven administrative regions. So we look at uh, these administrative regions, they are seven in number. We will quickly uh, look at the one after the other, oh, beginning okay. with uh, Banjul. Uh, as you can see, Banjul is the smallest administrative area of the with 21,372 registered voters. The female number of registered voters stands at 11,224. It accounts for 53%. So we have been seeing that. We have more female registered voters than uh, uh, their male counterparts. Mm -hmm. So the number for male registered voters in Banjul stands at 10,148. It accounts for 47% uh, of those registered in the capital city. Banjul has uh, three constituencies, and then you have uh, 36 polling stations uh, in the capital city, uh, Banjul. So we'll move on and look at one of the other uh, constituencies. Let's look at uh, the Basse uh, administrative area. I mean, uh, Basse administrative area we want to look at now. It is in the Upper River region. So you have the total number of registered voters in the Basse administrative area. 118,210 uh, are the people registered for the 2021 presidential elections in the Basse administrative area. More female, as usual, again, in Basse. I mean, the number, 73,185 uh, female are registered for the 2021 elections in Banjul. So that accounts for 62% of the uh, number of registered voters in the Basse administrative area. And like you can see the figures on your screen there, uh, 45,025 for uh, male registered voters in the Basse administrative area, and that accounts for 38%. Uh, uh, so we move on and look at uh, Brikama, the Brikama administrative area, which we have been talking about. It is the biggest administrative area, accounting for a uh, little over a quarter of a million registered voters. You can see the number there, it is staggering. 359,451 registered voters in the Brikama administrative area. And that is also where you have the biggest constituencies, you have the Sari Mentorings, the Busumbala, and all you do. And so you'll be dissecting the numbers in those constituencies later on. When you look at the number of registered voters that are female in the biggest administrative area, 202,365 are female in the bigger administrative area. And again, you can see more female registered voters and that they are male. So it's also highlight the level of women participation uh, in this 2021 election. So their male counterparts, the number is uh, 157,084. So uh, we we'll move on and look at uh, Janjambure. Janjambure also is another very big administrative area, although it is almost uh, half of the number of registered voters in the Brikama administrative area. So in Janjambure, that is in the Central River region, the total number of registered voters uh, for the 2021 presidential election, we have uh, 119,606 uh, registered voters for Janjambure. And the number of female registered voters there, 68,877. It accounts for 58%. So as usual, I mean, uh, more female more voters in Janjamure than... More than half are female. More than half, more than half are female in the Janjamure administrative area, Abdullah. And the number for uh, male registered voters in the Janjamure administrative area, 50,729. And that accounts for... 42%, and you can see you have uh, 11 constituencies in the Janjamure administrative area. So we move on to Kanifing. Kanifing, separated apart from uh, the Brikama administrative area, Kanifing uh, accounts for uh, the second largest number of registered voters for 2021. The number is 179,800 uh, voters uh, for the 2021 presidential elections in the Kanifing administrative area. So that makes it a battleground. So you have uh, the number of female registered voters there, 97,741. And again, uh, they, are, they are women, more than half it again. So the women are dominating as far as the numbers are concerned in terms of those that are registered to vote for uh, the vote in this 2021 presidential election. So the male 
46 percent the number is 82,059 so you have uh, the constituencies there as well so we want to uh carry one let's look at carry one uh very briefly carry one also over 100,000 registered voters the number is 109,262 for the care one administrative area again uh, more female registered voters this time the percentage is at 57 yes so it looks like men are becoming an endangered species anyway we, we we can see that we have uh, i mean uh, more uh, female registered voters and as far data we got from the world bank we have uh, over 2.4 million gambians and uh, that number also that is data we got from the world bank uh, most of that number and women so the female account for uh more, more more people as far as that data is concerned so back to the care we did the care one administrative area and we move on to mansakonko which is separate and apart from banjul it is the smallest mm -hmm. so mansakonko is second smallest as in terms of numbers we have uh, 54,456 registered voters in these 2021 presidential elections so 29,880 uh, female again, over 50, I mean, more 55 percent, yeah, more than half. Once again, for the registered voters in the Mansa Congo administrative area, and then uh, you can see for their male counterparts, 24,574. That counts for uh, 45 percent. So six constituencies there, 103 polling stations. So those are the figures for the 2021. I'm sure. Uh, we will be updating our, uh, our, our viewers as the results come in. to uh, come in. We have the leaderboard. Let's show them uh, where we'll be having the the, 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 the the updated results as they come in. We have the leaderboard right there. Once the results start coming, I mean, we will be having the, the, the number of votes for each candidate. And again, we'll be having the percentage mm -hmm. in real time. Abdullah. Great. Yes, sir. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, so, uh, Hasum, yes. uh, we look at the candidates. They are policies. Uh, well, yes. Yeah. Um, my um, first impression, mm. you know, speaking um, from historical knowledge, um, really there is a lot of continuity mm. in proposals, you know, plans and programs. Mm. Because let's face it, um, this country over the past you know, 60 years, almost every aspect of development agenda mm. have been experimented with. Mm. What I'm saying is that it is very, very difficult to really bring something new mm. to the table. Mm. As far as manifestos, I mean, programs, proposals, and plans are concerned. Mm. So policies are being recycled? Well, yes. Mm. Well. And let's look at the environment, mm. you, you know, for example. I mean, there can be hardly anything, um, you know, new. As far back as 1977, mm. for example, you know, Yawara unveiled the Bantu Declaration, mm. okay, which was quite a very, very succinct, forward-looking, mm. almost prophetic, you know, document, mm. okay? And he did the 1977 you know, elections campaign, and likely focus on environmental issues long, long before, I mean, I mean, I mean it became the, the vogue as it is today, mm. okay? Mm. You know, when it comes to gender issues, mm. as far back as 1966, mm. you know, in the elections of that year, mm. Sadawda promised um, in the PPP, you know, hostings, mm. that if re-elected, the PPP was going to amend the constitution. So as to enable a woman to sit in the parliament. I mean, there was nothing by the woman from sitting in the parliament. But the problem was, um, he were, um, the president or the prime minister at the time was allowed to nominate mm. only three people, okay? And he wanted to enlarge that nomination portfolio so that he will nominate women to sit in parliament. So that was really a very, very early attempt mm -hmm. um, at, if you like, you know, like affirmative action, you know, to put a woman mm -hmm. in, you know, political position, mm -hmm. okay? And now you look at the economy. I mean, I mean, you know, we had, um, you know, like Christian Democrats, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, agenda, you know, you know like reference JC5, mm -hmm. you know, social Democrats, you know, like the GDC, mm -hmm. the, you know, the PPP in the 60s, you know, believe it or not, mm. uh, Mr. C, mm. uh, even had a Maoist, 
<laughs> policy. You know, policy, mm. because the PPP had this green revolution idea, mm. empowering the farmers. Mm. I mean, that's how they established the mixed farming centers, mm. you know, the Oxplow schools, mm. you know, the OIC, you know, the opportunity industrialization, you know, centers, mm. uh, you know, the rural development project, you know, the, the agricultural development bank. You know, all these, you know, were policies which were, um, I mean, um, but did, did, they, did they work? Empowering. Yeah, did they work? The peasantry. Mm. Did some work, mm. some did not work. Mm. So, if you come to 2021, mm. all what you can do really is to, you know, take it up from there. Mm. So really, as a historian, I don't really see anything new. Mm. What I see is, you know, um, the candidates, you know, sort of, you know, giving a fresh approach mm. to all issues. Mm. I think that is very good. Mm. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. I mean, there is nothing under this earth that Sadawra, for example, mm. they didn't experiment with, mm. or that Pierre Yai, they didn't experiment with, or that, you know, Jahumpa, mm. they didn't try. If, you know, he even tried. I mean, the idea of an Islamic state, for example, mm -hmm. you know, in the 60s. So, so really, I mean, we have had, you know, this country has been blessed with political leaders, you know, who had foresight, mm -hmm. such that much of what we are now talking about had been tried before. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, you know, success has not been. But do you think this has been translated into development? If you look at the Gambia, even by developing world stra uh, standards, still a very, very underdeveloped state? Well, I, 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 I disagree, mm. uh, you know, from, uh, from a historian's point of view. Mm. This country has moved by leaps and bounds mm. from 1965 to date. Mm. Look, there was nothing here except the people. Mm. Nothing you know, at independence. Uh, you know, you know the old story that even the UN mm. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, under, under, under the Secretary General and Utant, you know, the bombs, you know, diplomat, mm -hmm. said we should not allow this country to be independent mm -hmm. until he had to send a United Nations fact-finding mission, mm -hmm. you know, led by a Dutch in diplomat, Mr. Van Mook, mm -hmm. who came in 1964 to see whether, in fact, the UN should allow this country to be independent because there was nothing. Mm. The only grounds, no, no tourism, no industry. So that two years after independence, for the first two years after independence, the British government every month will put pounds mm. in containers to bring to the Gambia to pay salaries. Yeah, just to tell you how, you know, how perilous mm -hmm. In distribution in this and country. There was, this idea, there was no road network. There was this idea of union with Senegal. Yes. Yes, you yes. come to that. I know you, mm -hmm. you know, I know you are a student of international relations. You know, you will come to that. Mm -hmm. There was no road network mm -hmm. in this country in 65. Mm -hmm. There was no road. Mm -hmm. The only road we had was the road linking, you know, Cape Point, mm -hmm. you know, to Batos. But that's what the governor used to take every morning mm -hmm. or the colonial section. Mm -hmm. There was no road network. All what we had were boost tracks. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, in 65, there were 13 university graduates, including one, doctors. One three. One three mm. university graduates mm. in this country. Mm. One three. Now, even if you look at, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, school enrollment, mm. you know, independence in 1965, the figures, I mean, I mean, because there was this journalist, you know, from West Africa, mm. he estimated that, you know, literacy rate in the greater Bangal area, in Batos, um, it, you know, would be about 10 percent. And outside, he put it as low as 3 percent mm. in 1965. We only had Amitek school, for example, mm. uh, you know, in the, in the protectorate. So um, this country has gone a long way. Mm. And I think we should really be more charitable to our political leaders. Mm. The problem has been we have been operating within a very hostile international context. <laughs> and I know you will come to that <laughs> as, we, as, we, as we continue with the discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Uh, Kali, yes. you, you've seen the data. Most yeah. of the registered people are women. What does that tell us? You did earlier allude to that women participate very well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think this it has something to do with uh, nature and also um, migration issues. Mm. Uh, we have more female, we have more women in the country than uh, mm. males. Mm. Uh, it could be, um, although I don't have any scientific data on this, it could be also I didn't confirm. Uh, mortality rate may be higher in men than mm. women but also you know uh, the irregular migration also has contributed significantly mm. uh, to the gender disparity in terms of um, male uh, female male ratio uh, well uh, this is um, it's telling the women something. Mm. I don't know whether it's telling the men uh, uh, the same, it's sending the same message to the, to the men also, that it's about time women also start clapping for themselves. Mm. Uh, because if you look at, yeah, whoever, whoever is going to emerge the winner today, it is, it is the women who are going to make him the leader. the leader. And when it comes to voting, uh, Mr. C, uh, you go to the, I was at the polling station uh, this morning, and then I was there to cast my vote, but I was also st studying the, the the gender composition of of those queuing to vote de to 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 cast their their votes. Um, majority of them are women, so I think this is telling us the women that it's about time we also go out to the field and start clapping for ourselves. Mm. And w beside the clapping, what are the issues that women are interested in? What are the specific issues that you think? women are interested in this election? I think uh, women, if you look at our role, it's, uh, we are all, always tied to the, the domestic. Uh, and uh, most of the women at the grassroots, if you talk to, uh, talk to them today, uh, they will be concerned about somebody making the market uh, cheaper for them. Cost of living. Yes, and, and they will also be interested in uh, somebody who will maintain peace. And, and tranquility in the society because you know uh, um, Mr. Sise uh, can allude to that women are known for peacemaking mm -hmm. from history so um, I think uh, and also being able to um, have access to productive resources to fend for their families because uh, no matter wherever we are um, wh whether you are a cabinet minister a woman or a director or whatever uh, at the end of the day you go to your office but your mind is always on the family that is because of the society. So things that are really related to family issues and welfare of family we, is a great concern for women and women will definitely want to see leaders change that okay. uh, to make things easy for them yeah. around that uh, circle. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll go for another short break. We'll be back. <laughs> GRTS election night special, The Gambia Votes, 2021 presidential elections. From voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates. As the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term facing UDP's Hussein Udabo, GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esam Baipal. Follow the day's pushes on election night special, live on GRTS, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls with expert activities across our social media platforms. Join us on GRTS Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube for access to the 2021 presidential elections. Election night special, the Gambia votes.
welcome back once again on GRTS. Ezra, let's look at the data for 2016. Very well. So we will uh, hover over the data for 2016. That is the uh, latest elections held before this 2021. 20, uh, so it precedes the 2021 uh, elections. We're trying to get the data load. Let's look at uh, 2016 and see uh, what's happening. So as you can see on the uh, top of the screen, looking back at 2016. So in 2016, the field key figures, we had uh, 886,578 registered votes. You can see uh, the total number of votes that were cast for 2016, 525,962. So you can see uh, so many people did not vote in 2016. That is why the voter turnout stands at 59%. So I'm sorry we will look at that uh, very shortly. From 886,000 to 525,000. So you can see the number of people that did not vote in uh, 2016. I'm sure you'll be looking at the reasons and some other things bordering around that later on. So we had uh, 165 invalid votes in 2016. So like I said, the voter turnout contrast to what we have uh, in 2021 where we have a total of six. So we look at how the candidates performed in 2016. As you can see, it was the APRC of uh, former president in 2021. And the current incumbent, who was uh, leading a, a coalition. So he was an independent candidate then. Today he has his own party, he is the uh, NPP. So in the Bangal administrative area, uh, the APRC scored, as you can see there, 43% of the total number of votes that were cast in the capital city. The number is 5,704. And then the GDC, as you can see, got only 8% of the total number of votes that were cast in the Banjul administrative area in 2016. And uh, the, 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 the winner, uh, the incumbent who won in 2016 got 6,639. And that accounts for 50% of the votes that were cast in the Banjul administrative area in 2016. So uh, Adam Abaro won in Banjul. It was three candidates. This time around we have uh, six. So we look at uh, the Basse administration administrative area, I mean, uh, the APRC, as you can see on the JAME, got 24,490, accounting for the comes from, got, the GDC got 11,289, uh, and that accounts for only 18%. So the GDC was trailing in Banjul in 2016 and did trail in the uh, Upper River region, that is the Basse administrative area in 2016. 44% uh, uh, won in Banjul and one comes from Basse. So the two of them, Kama, uh, in the West Coast region, the APRC, where Jame comes from mm -hmm. in 2016, Jame scored a total of uh, 76,800. 80 votes, accounting for 44% of the total number of votes that were cast in the uh, Brikama administrative area. Then the GDC got 21,656, 12%, yet again, uh, trailing at the uh, bottom of the standings in 2016, as far as 823, so 43%. Uh, percent. So, I mean, Jame won in, uh, in, the, in the Brikama administrative area with only 43 uh, for uh, Adam Abaro in the uh, Brikama administrative area in uh, 2016. So over now to Janjambure in the Central River region in 2016, the APRC, 30,228, 43% of the total number of votes cast in the uh, Janjambure administrative area in 2081, 25% uh, of the votes. So at least uh, there was a, a rise in terms of percentage for the GDC uh, in the Janjambure administrative area. That accounts for 32% uh, uh, 16, with 43% of the uh, total number of votes cast, compared to 32% uh, percent for uh, Adam Abaro, who is uh, running for, uh, I mean, on that NPP ticket, uh, with a very huge uh, voter popular the APRC, and then incumbent Yahya Jame, he scored 40% of the total number of votes cast in the Carnifing administrative area. And then we move on and look at what the GDC got in the Carnifing administrative area cast in the Carnifing 4,107, uh, accounting for 50% of the total number of votes. So, I mean, Barrow was very popular in the Carnifing kind of administrative area uh, in 2016. If you compare what he got to uh, some of the, uh, to his two other challenges in 2016. So, Kerewan, which is not a very big uh, administrative area as well, 18,000 for the APRC, 331, 29% of uh, the votes for Jami in the Kerewan administrative area. The Nomama Kande in the Kerewan administrative area, he got uh, administrative area than Yaya Jami in 2016. So we look at Adam Abao, I mean, he got 23,000. 346, accounting for 37% of the total number of votes for Baro Image winner in the Kerewan administrative area as well in the 2016 uh, presidential election. Abdullah, 
If you look at now the smallest comes in 7,900 and the GDC 5,048 votes were cast for Mama Kande and his party accounting for 17 percent this time around I mean uh, he did not uh, get more votes than the APRC so he was uh, at 17 percent he was trailing and then uh, Adam Abaro got 56 percent of the total number of votes that were cast in the Mansa Congo administrative area in 2016 a total of 16,476 votes so in total PRC 208,487 votes for Yahya Jani. And then uh, for uh, Mama, and that accounts for 40% uh, of the total number of votes, 487. And then uh, the GDC got 89. 789,768. That is what uh, Mama Kande got in total in the 2016 presidential election, and he got 17% of the total number of votes that were cast in uh, 2016. And then the eventual winner, Adam Abaro, who is uh, the incumbent, got 227,708 votes uh, in total in the 2016 presidential elections, accounting for 43% of the votes. So he got three percentage points. More than Yaya Jame in the 2016. 2021. Yes, 2021. Okay. Yeah, many times. Thank you. Baba, what do you read of the data? Well, uh, okay, before we go into that, I think, mm. uh, uh, going back to mm. the, 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 the reason why uh, we have more, is it uh, was basically, as she pointed out, registered voters are found in the regions than mates. Uh, if we do an in-depth Ankyanka here or whatever, <laughs> or, 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 or Sarahule, mm. if you go to the Massa Congo region, mm. region, for instance, you see about 45%. Only about 45% of the registered voters are males. Mm. Where else to, to become? Mm. Mm. We see that uh, there's a high percentage of female registered voters. Mm as compared to males, mm. another important factor. Mm. That is, people migrating out, because they, and that is age in the sense that uh, it's mainly the youth, the young people that migrate, okay? And the second selective in the sense that it's mainly the male who oh migrate. God. So as a result of migration, mm. whereas the women stay, Tend to stay in the in the rural areas or whatever in the places of uh, bad, bad mm -hmm. So than men, mm -hmm. yeah, if you look at the life expectancy, okay, that is the situation in the Gambia and uh, in many other generally countries. that is that is that is universal. In many other okay? countries, in many other countries. Mm -hmm. There are reasons for this, okay? She said uh, maybe these are due to male occupational uh, differentials. Mm -hmm. The attitude, the habit, okay, okay, uh, like for instance, uh, uh, that also contributed, okay, the attitude of men in terms of uh, certain certain issues, like for instance, drinking, okay, lifestyle. smoking, okay, lifestyle, lifestyle okay, <coughs> that. Uh, is more male centered than females. Mm -hmm. So all this reduces uh, 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 life. Mm -hmm. For the university, the sex ratio is higher males than this. We have more male births than female. females. Okay? More male births than females. But then uh, as the babies grow, mm -hmm. mortality is high among male, male, ba male babies. Mm -hmm. that, okay? Okay. That is it. So would it be correct to say the male survival rate is lower than the female one for babies? Yeah, of, 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 of course, of course. You see? Mm. And even if you look at the life of me, females, it's higher than that of males. Mm. males. Not only for the guy, but that is global. Mm. Yes, and, and before he answers the question on the facts, I, I also want um, to do a survey. Mm. on female participation in politics. And to his surprise, there were more females on the voters list than male. And um, he attributed that to, like he said, internal migration. Because in those days, usually from October, mm -hmm. 
to me, and the bottles was empty. Of meals. They are all in the villages. Okay. You know, buying and selling groundnuts. Okay. Ah, so we'll, yeah. we'll come back to yeah. We're just going for a quick break. A quick one. <laughs> GRTA Selection Night Special, The Gambia Votes, 2021 Presidential Elections, from voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates, as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term, facing UDP's Hussein Udabo, GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esa Baipal. Follow the day's issues on election night special, live on GRTS, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls activities across our social media platforms. Election night special, the Gambia votes. <laughs> Selling and buying granules, so registration, you know, in bottles. Um, most of the compounds, you know, we are female headed compounds, mm. whereas the man is up river. And in those days, very in the household in bottles, mm. such that most of the I mean, um, you know, people registered, you know, to vote in the 54 elections, and, you know. In Bakos, we are female. And, and, and I think that's where, that's why I say this term is really in a very, very poor one. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you focus on your take yes. on that? Well, I quite agree with Mr. Sise. Um, because, you know, migration also has uh, patterns. And you, you, are, uh, you look at uh, uh, the gender disparity in terms of uh, a number of registered votes. Um, men, they have uh, what they call home, uh, um, wives at home. It's of recent that women started, trying. but previously uh, men, they go and live and look for um, the wealth to, to, to get something uh, for the welfare of the family. So my, we cannot rule out in both internal migration. Okay, great. Baba, can you interpret the data? On Looking at the and the data, of course, uh, we've seen the population of the Gambia. Uh, I think this is the projected population for 2021. Yes. Know, huh? Yes. Okay, where this uh, figure? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you're looking at the, the population by, from 1960 to 2020. 2020, yes. Mm -hmm. well, you can look at the, the, the trend. Mm -hmm. Of course, the population has been increasing, okay? But uh, uh, the population has been steadily in, increasing. Now, the last census, census was in 2013, the population was a little above 2, uh, two million. million. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, as, uh, uh, as far back as uh, 1970, the population was around the first census after independence. We had our independence in 1965, and the first census was in, 2000, in 1973. And the population count at that time was around uh, 1971. Yeah, 200. yeah 1971 from 73 to 80. Right now we are in 20. Uh, we are talking of 2020. Okay, that is uh, almost uh, seven years after the census. 
So the population is about 2.35. This year we have 60% of the population are males. Important thing I want to say mm. is still, as the population increases, mm. the density also increases. increases. Mm. Okay? That is the population, that is the number of persons per square kilometer. kilometer. Mm -hmm. Okay? I think the Gambia and Rwanda are one of the most densely that, populated that in Africa. Populated. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, okay, this, but of course, our resources, natural resources, we are not, not much endowed mm -hmm. with uh, natural resources. Of course, uh, uh, human beings are natural resources, but other uh, uh, resources, like for instance, mineral, we are not that much endowed with that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we need to think along that line. The population has been increased. So as the population increases, there are some implications. Mm. Okay? I have deforestation, you see. The way out is that this uh wants to have in uh, come up with innovative uh, uh means that so how to sustain the population numbers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Some of the Okay? Mm. We say that the, the world population, okay, has been increasing at a at the exponential rate, okay. Whereas the Resources. production mm -hmm. is increasing, okay. So that was his. Uh, so the population was increasing at a faster rate than some of of production. production. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is the way for way, way for, for uh, not to marry? Mm -hmm. So permanent celibacy. Okay. <laughs> Those coming. Okay. Okay. At least. So you delay marriage, mm -hmm. at least the more you delay marriage, at least the, the shorter the period you have to, 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 to give back to your children. At least the more you delay marriage, marriage, maybe the lesser children you may have. Okay, but then there are, of course, these are very important mm -hmm. There are other uh, thoughts of school mm -hmm. that came to uh, a challenge, not uh, thinking that uh, People can give back out of uh, out of marriage, and also faster than people can. Mm. Okay. I think a more recent example would be China's one-child policy. Okay, one-child policy. Yeah, but they have to reverse. But they have to reverse it because there was a point when mm. the country was sort of manpower. Yeah, mm -hmm. They have to export uh, re reverse the the policy, at least to allow people to give back to more children. Okay. Uh, looking at the data, uh, as you said, uh, the, uh, the sex ratio, the male, female, and female was 63.5%, the male 60.5%. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 62.1%. So 62.1. That was the sex ratio. 62.1. So you have more. I mean, females in the population than males. Okay. Now, with the life expectancy, 63.5% females compared to 60.7%, why this is happening. Now, looking at the overall uh, the pressures also, you can see about 62 or 63% of the population are urban, urban. compared to 37% which is rural. Now, here, I want to come to at least to, uh, the, the issue of upper. Hmm. What do we mean by upper? Hmm. Okay? When you talk of upper, hmm. uh, people may be thinking of maybe that our census with stakeholders, these stakeholders, like for instance, the Department of Fiscal Planning, we invite them at least to set the criteria for the finding where. What's the criteria? What of the criteria is the size of the population? Mm. Okay. The other one, I think, it depends on the the uh, this, uh, the the, 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 the that has to be some infrastructure social amenities. Um, amenities in here. Okay. The other one, I think, is uh, this, the majority of the population has to be non-agricultural population. Mm. Okay. These are three, and then there are about five. The other two I cannot recall, okay? Mm -hmm. So if any population... Mm -hmm. Now, if we go by that definition, like for instance, mass mm -hmm. the population is very low. But going by this criteria, mm -hmm. the residents of mass 
most of them they are not they are not uh, agricultural in agricultural infrastructure. So, mm. okay. The whole of Kiang. Yeah. Mm. Uh, like the Kamaba. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay. The food yet I think go home. Mm. So the urban does not only limit us to buy People are moving from the People are moving from in the city, in the Sierra, around around the Kamaba. People are moving from okay. Uh, around a break, a short one. Accounting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term facing UDP's Usainu Dabo, GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Babakar Sai Fal. Follow the day's polling active issues on election night special live on GRTS, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls with expert analysis, breaking new activities across our social media platforms. Join us on GRTS Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for access to the 2021 presidential elections. Election night special. Votes. 2021 presidential elections. From voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 gam as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term facing UDP's Usain Dabo, GDC's Mama Kande, PDO by Fal. Follow the dishes on election night special live on GRTS, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls with expert analysis, breaking news and results in quick time from the IEC. We're also streaming all election activities across our social media platforms. Join us on GRT's Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube for access to the 2021 presidential elections. RTS election night special accounting get all the details on one place over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term facing UDP's Usain Dabo GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esam Baifal. Follow the day's polling issues on election night special, live on GRTS, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls activities across our social media platforms. Join us on GRTS Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube for access to the 2021 presidential elections. Election night special. The Gambia votes. GRTS election night special. The Gambia votes. 2021 presidential elections. From voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term facing UDP's Usain Dabo, GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esam Baifal. Follow the day's polling activities on GRT's TV and radio, as well as vote counting and all breaking issues on election night special, live on GRT's bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls activities across our social media platforms. Join us on election night special. Mm -hmm. 
GRTS election night special. Gambia votes 2021 presidential elections from voting to counting get all the details on one place over 900 as the incumbent Adam Abao seeks a second term facing UDP's Usain. Welcome back the head office. Murujalo, can you hear us? Murujalo? Omuri Jallo, can you hear us? Omuri Jallo, at the IEC, can you hear us? Put the data again. That yes, is the uh, socio-economic, the democratic sense. Yes, mm. uh, we're talking about the top one, two. Sound check, one, two, three. Uh, we have not done a census in this country for a while. So this is data as far. According to the World Bank, the current uh, population battle hard in highway where the stage is already been set for the official announcement of the results of the 2020 way since 5 p.m. fixed here. Any moment from now expected to come in set. As you can see, a tent has been erected here outside of the election house. Uh, within the perimeter fence of the election house. This is the tent the state has called media houses. That is the national press corps president of the results. We all know that six presidential candidates are contesting uh, the Democratic Party. Khalifa Salah of the PDOIS, SFA, the only independent candidate. Ibrahim uh, Jame, uh, National Unity Party. And of course, the only independent candidate, as well as um, the, 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 the Gambia Democratic Congress is the ticket. These are the five, six presses would be announced by the press, uh, the chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission. As the stage has been set, everyone is now waiting. The press is set, waiting for the IEC chairman and his officials to come out from the IEC building, come sit here and uh, announce the results. And the Gambia Radio and Television Services is set. Of course, as usual, and always, as the pay setters to be giving you the results as they tick in. Um, this is something that the national broadcaster has always been leading. And of course, we are assured of a fascinating night as our team of experts, our team of analysis, our team of journalists are already ready to give you the results. Badi ngolun balbe konto namba fali ko balie election house le wale ai sila korra bato me alon ko be patil hadin highway jang kwali alon nyameng eh gambia nol be tulo ni nya be be loring ai si korra balto damento yalon ko eh mo be be botun ro kerin pour ai si la nyaton ko memo aliou mo borin jaiti pour ai fintinan ai na ai adatika eh carte fay ki carte fay nyin da da kumfan adatita kabin tele lulu e sambe tembo momento mo bebe siri la corrado ngalon ko mo bebe ki baro le batukan pour kaponan iec nyaton ko bu memo aliou momor njaiti me yalon ko nyin tembo anala kafo molu ibe iec bumba ko ne mon fintinan folo jandum be lori ngale jandame nyin tentoto al kwalia de nyame tento ni nyina pale parendi me damento yalon ko aliou momor njai anala kafo molu anin patiol la nyaton ko men yalon ko wolel nata katara jang pour ka mabe me yalon ko e kontiro nyin tara nyameng wolle be fintle bi ne be sila nyin tento do jang nyin sira wol be nyi nyin tabulo me yalon ko ye be nyi nyandi ya be koindi microphone wol fele fana wol fana ye be place ko ali aje nyameng e kan tuta jang rek wolle aliou momor njai anala timo mo anala kafo moli ye fintinan yena ya datika result sol nyin ka kankula 
mbokk ñu ngi leen nal nuyu di leen dalal di leen santa di leen gërem di leen wax ne yena nga setan gambie radio and television service says ma nek leen fi nak ci election house moy kéri election independent electoral commission bu nek ci patil hadin highway comme niñ ko xamé nak fum nek ni gambian ci ñepp fum nek ñu ngi tok di xaar pour aliou maman jaay gena ci ñew dor di joxé results eh ñu ngi yakarné du yaga aliou maman jaay warna gena ak timam bi pour ñu ñew fi la wara tok di seen fi defon nañ fi tane bu rafet bi nga xamné fum nek ni microphone yépp ñu ngi nalé yena ngi ko gis microphone yi nak mën na wax né gambia sen media bi yépp gambia sen taskati ki taskati yepang fi amna ñu fi tamit dem international press ko ñu am leen joge bitim rew pour ñew feké election bi naka la jalé so fum nek ni mbir bi non la fi tedé xamna ne ñu bari ñu ngi yakamti bu ga dégg di official announcement of results comme ñu ko xamé jurom benn candidate ño neka ño taxaw di jonganté pour neka president ni gambia so mbir bi nawla fi tedé fum nek ni aliou mawara ndjay ak timam bi ak officialisme ñu ngi ci bir neek bi ci bir ayc ñu ngi yakarné wu na ñu gën at any time ñew tok start di joxé les des results ci musib am ful bi salmini ñom mi yetti yon ila ngi nawon on hiré jam ming numo as jalo woné woné ñu ñu do so election house du woni ayc sudu ayc mawnu dum on du batil hadin highway ko em fonno andir no fewndo do ni fopi no jodi ki no happi aliou mamon jaay o ara o jodo do e o tabul do o yi do ko do be fewni fi aliou mamon jaay du woni yeso jo independent electoral commission o yalta o ara o wada announce results jeding la ngani fewndo yimbe ben fo ko dum happi ko don official announcement because results yaltu do ci IEC wadani mo announce haray ha joni ki no heddi so ko IEC watta di official announcement of the results so do independent electoral commission do fewndo yimbe ben fo pari suduji suduji yalti en yalti no be kibaru be fow fino do be nanda ko be woni ka der leddi do e wobbe kadi be nanda be imori no keli go be ari pour tawe gol election 2021 election no so ko don feon ko non feon no ri do to iec no jrs wo yo wadar ne every year every election men ara do men jonna on kibaru ji labudi so jode ka chuudi mon jento don resolution boyata Siyalla jabi aliu mo bonu jai o yalta i o ara o fukdo jonu re kebaro jinin. So if you ask, that's the situation on the ground here at the election house on the battle hardin highway. We are expecting any moment from now the IEC chairman aliu mo bonu jai and his team to walk out of the IEC building, come and take their positions here and start giving out the official results. Dice has been cast. Who is going to be? the next president of the Gambia. Well, time will tell. It's gonna be a long night though, but it's what it's. And the place to be is the Gambia Radio and Television Services, as always. So it's back to our MDI studios, SSO and Abdul IC. This is the situation here uh, at the election house on the Battle Hardin Highway. Many thanks, Mohamed Bujalo from the IEC. Uh, Esa, you can go through the data on the population. Uh, very well, uh, Abdullah, yeah. we just began doing it, and then uh, Mohamed S came on the line from the IEC uh, head office on the Battle Hardin Highway. So we were talking about the population demography of the Gambia. This is data courtesy of the World Bank. Like I said, initially, we haven't done a census for a while, and this data is as per the year 2020. So uh, according to the data we got from the World Bank, the current population of the Gambia is 2,416,664. Out of that number, uh, 1,218,124 are females. 
And so that is the number of females as per the data on the population demography of the country. And uh, 1,198,540 are uh, male. So you look at uh, the life expectancies, 62.6 uh, uh, for both sexes and uh, for females, 63.2. Five percent, and then you have uh, male sixty point seven. So Abdullah, you look at uh, the Gambia population information from nineteen sixty to uh, the uh, twenty twenty. That is when uh, this current data was uh, developed. You, have, you look at uh, at the tail end of a period of sixty years. Yes, a period of sixty years. It pans over a duration of sixty years, like you said, uh, from uh, nineteen sixty. So you can see how the graph uh, keeps going up. Uh, in the, this is nineteen seventy. This is nineteen eighty. Zero point uh, fifty eight uh, million, and then you have uh, uh, for the year nineteen. 1990, 0 uh, 83 million, and then we got our first million uh, population in the year uh, 2000, and that was uh, 1 million 300 uh, thousand. So uh, moving on, you look at uh, the year 2010 as well. The graph, it's right there. It's moving uh, 1.6, and then in uh, 2020 we have a uh, 3.35. So we are in 2021. 20, uh, so there are. Uh, I mean, differences in terms of the population in rural Gambia and the population in urban areas. You look at the population for uh, the people living in the uh, rural communities, it stands at 62.58% uh, of the population lives in urban areas. So you have more people living in urban Gambia than in uh, rural Gambia. You have uh, the rural population at 374 uh, so a lot of people are moving from, uh, I mean, rural areas coming to uh, urban areas, and that is as per uh, 2020. So we look at uh, labor force and employment later on, but as per the population, these are the latest uh, demographics that we have uh, put together, courtesy of the World Bank. It is 2020 data, Abdullahi. Thank you very much, uh, Esa. Now, Hazum, as you heard from our colleagues from the IEC, soon we'll get the first results. Now, let's look at our voting system. It is a simple majority system. Uh, yes. Yes. Can you explain that? Uh, well, it has um, always been like that. Um, I mean, we have not had you know, any other approach, you know, really, um, since, um, you know, the beginning of elections, of multi-party elections. I mean, in, in this country, um, from really um, 1947 to 1977, it was really um, a very, very interesting, um, you know, form of elections we had mm. uh, because uh, um, the elections were generally called general elections, meaning that. Uh, we voted, you know, only for the MPs, and the MPs uh, will vote to elect a president. Mm. Okay. Uh, particularly um, in '72, mm. after we became a republic and had a president, uh, well, 1970, but the '72 elections, and in '77. Now, in 1982, um, to take Gambian multi-party democracy a step further, mm. Sadawda said, now. He wanted to be elected directly by the people. You know, this was just in the aftermath of the Kukoi Sambasanyan coup. Mm -hmm. And the opposition, you know, basically NCP, were saying that, well, I mean, you know, this coup shows that you are not popular. Popular, you know. But Sarada, I mean, I mean, dared them. So he I wanted, said, okay. He wanted to prove a point. Yes, he wanted to prove a point. He said, now, there will be two mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. Parliamentary election and presidential election. So really, um, you know, presidential elections, as we know it, as we are doing today, started only in 1982, mm -hmm. okay? Before 1982, there was only one ballot box, okay? You know, for the MP. Mm -hmm. So if you vote for the MP, mm -hmm. the MPs who have won, mm -hmm. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the most seats in the parliament will elect, I mean, the president. Just like the, party British, leader. the British system. Where the prime minister comes from, yes. the party with the most seats. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in '72, um, um, you know, the PPP had Salauda as their candidate, mm -hmm. but there was no ballot box for Salauda. Mm -hmm. The UP had Mr. Pasi Koka mm -hmm. as their candidate, but there was no ballot box for Pasi Koka. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, ballot box only for the MPs. Now, when the PPP 
was declared, uh, you know, winner, uh, you know, having won the majority of seats in the parliament. Mm. Then in the first sitting of the parliament, they, I mean, elected, you know, Salauda, their party leader as president. Mm. The same thing happened in 1977. Mm. But in 1982, just to tell you how our democracy you know, has been growing and maturing, Salauda said, we will now have two elections. I want to be elected directly by the people, mm. not to be given a mandate indirectly. I mean, through, I mean, the MPs. Mm. If somebody asked me this question, and I said, well, presidential election as we are doing today dates to 1982. Mm. And, well, a first past the post, you know, generally, I think, I think, um, you know, because of, you know, parsimonious economy, mm. <laughs> you know, you just do it once, you know, elections are costly. They are costly. Yes. And two, um, you know, stability also, you do it once and it's over, you know, people go back to work mm. because this country is really in need of, <laughs> mm. uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, every effort, mm. you know, that we can muster. Mm. But something also very interesting, and this I must say a few words, the emergence of the Independent Electoral Commission mm. in 1996. You know, okay, before you go to that, yeah, this simple majority that you were explaining, is there not the danger of like the winner not being actually the person with the most votes, but just with the having more votes than any other person? Uh, Mr. C, you know, I mean, I mean, this democracy, mm. I mean, nobody can get it all correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you can be elected, you know, with overwhelming majority. Mm. That's better, but now and then you can be, you know, elected, uh, you know, with less than 50 percent, mm. you know, with less than 30 percent. I think that's the nature of democracy itself. But yeah. also, I think it is good always mm. to look at what is really possible in terms of economy, in terms of stability, uh, you know, you know, logistics. The elections are a very, very, a very costly exercise. So the, in this case, whoever has a plurality of the votes is the winner, not necessarily who has the most votes. Uh, can you repeat that? Like, if you have a plurality of, of the votes, yeah. like you have more votes than any other candidate, yeah. but it doesn't mean you, your vote is Absolutely, more yes. than half yes. of the electorate. That's our system. Yes. Yes, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's how it has always been. Mm -hmm. I mean, and now, and now uh, that brings me to the issue of the IEC, mm -hmm. uh, which dates, you know, really 25 years ago mm -hmm. um, in the Second Republic. Before 1996, elections in this country mm -hmm. were conducted by civil servants. So IEC did not bring free and fair elections in this country. Mm. You know, they found it here. Mm. What the IEC has done mm -hmm. is like, I mean, to introduce another step. To institutionalize the process. Uh, well, yes, and also to, um, I mean, to bring another step mm. in our democracy. Mm. Just like Sajaura did in 82, mm -hmm. direct presidential elections. In 96, you know, the IEC came, and that was like another step forward mm. for Gambian democracy. But for 45 years, between 47 and 92, civil servants, elect, uh, I mean, uh, conducted elections. You had something called um, the actual office under the Ministry of Local Government and Land. And you have like a director of elections, you know. And this was a civil servant, you know, at the level of permanent secretary, okay, who conducted, you know, the elections. You know, civil servants were the returning officers, you know, and so on. I spoke to Mr. Mamurjan, a former, you know, governor of the Central Bank of the Gambia. He told me how in 1982, she went to the mile two prisons to register Sirif Diba as the presidential candidate for the NCP. Mm -hmm. Because Diba was in jail, um, you know, on, on, you know, facing charges of treason mm -hmm. for the 1981, I mean, attempted coup. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he told me he went to the prisons, you know, registered him. Okay, you know, give him like a voter's card, mm -hmm. okay, and put him on, on the actual register, okay. And really, uh, we should stress this point. Free and fair elections have been the hallmark mm -hmm. of our democracy, mm -hmm. okay. What the IEC has done is really to have a new bureaucracy, mm -hmm. okay, a new institution mm -hmm. charged with conducting elections. But before the IEC, um, our civil service, our civil servants, have spent 45 years conducting free, fair, and transparent democratic elections. And they were under no pressure from the state? No. Mm. I mean, I mean, you know, they were impartial, mm. um, frugal, mm. you know, anonymous, mm. you know, the typical characteristics of a civil servant. Mm. I mean, I mean, I mean, and they did very well. Mm. Of course, it is, 
um, in the mid 80s that um, you know parties like DOI you know started um, to agitate you know to campaign for a change in that system okay that you know it was not good enough um, to have a government department organize elections okay and as they I mean campaign against it you know um, with the advent of the Second Republic you know the junta you know embrace the idea of an independent electoral commission and it was also you know common in those you know days because you had all this second wave of democracy in Africa mm -hmm. uh, you know I mean in the francophone and the in the anglophone countries you know having separate institutions I mean organizing I mean I mean, I mean elections uh, but really it was um, a self-serving initiative also I you know the you know the junta was uh, you know, quite obsessed, you know, with playing to the International Gallery, mm. uh, you know, and, and uh, that was really a very right moment mm. for them to do something that Jawara did not do. Did not do. Yes. Mm. And it worked out for them. Oh, well, yes, it is still, you know, 25 years, you know, as we speak, and mm. I think, and I think it has, um, you know, really proven, you, you know, it's, um, you know, it's metal. Yes. Thank you very much, Hasung. We'll go for a break. We'll be back. GRTS election night special, the Gambia votes, 2021 presidential elections, from voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates, as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term, facing UDP's Usainu Dabo, GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esa Baifa. Follow the days. Thank you very much. First of all, I will thank all of you uh, for, for coming and for supervising the elections. The media is very, very important. You said, what is my message to my supporters if we should lose? We will never lose this election. It will be the biggest landslide victory in the history of this. I enjoy unprecedented support in this country. You have been following my campaign, and my campaign was very, very, very successful. I think the message was very, very clear. I am a leader who is focused on development, and that development will continue in this country. I know. In the next 24 hours, my people will be celebrating in the streets. Yeah, we are very happy about that because they, they are coming out in their numbers to exercise their rights. It's a constitutional right for every citizen to vote. So people are coming out. I think that is good for the Gambia. I think it's, it's, it's good for these uh, elections, for people to come out in their numbers, you know, to, to, to elect a president. I think that's important, definitely. We are happy with that. I said I am going to win with the biggest landslide. That's what I'm saying. I have, I am your unprecedented support in this country. Everybody knows that. Even you, the journalists, you know that. Who will be the winner? I will be the winner. So far, the process is smooth, is peaceful, but we still wait and see. But my advice to IEC is. They should remain neutral. If they are neutral, it makes it very easy for all of us, the players. And if they are neutral, it makes it easy for people to accept the final results. So my advice is going to IEC. I think they are the ones that are conducting the elections. Let them conduct a free, fair, transparent election. Thank you very much. All my supporters to show maximum respect to other people like we always do, to respect all individuals and to just understand that this is just a process of selection of a leader and uh, to respect the law and to ensure that we do not offend anybody. At the end of the day, we will assess the outcome and we would make the appropriate pronouncement. I call every Gam I call on all Gambians to exercise restraint and be law abiding. 
No matter what the results produce, we have processes to deal with them should in case there is disagreement. Instead of resorting to violence or other unlawful behavior, we have the justice system to which people can resort to. So I, exercise, I urge everybody to exercise restraint and calmness, uh, for which Gambia is very much known for. That this election will decide whether we have a new Gambian who can build a new Gambia, or we have Gambians who are still, by virtue of mindset, tied to the old, needing still change, which will take longer time and allowing poverty to persist for a longer time. And that suffering is unacceptable. The way that we conduct elections with the marble is not something that you can really be completely dissatisfied with because to steal the vote will be very difficult. I am quite... I think we've done everything that we could. Yeah. And now it's left to the electorates and God. Uh, but we feel very upbeat about the prospects because uh, we've been around the country and we've seen the people, we've seen their conditions and we've had them as well. So we know that there is uh, this yearning for a change. And we believe that our party is the party that will bring about the necessary change. My expectations are that we're going to win. My message is uh, cast your votes go back home, relax, be very hopeful. We know that, I mean, we uh, ran a very good campaign and we know that the message that we had for the people really resonated with them. So hopefully, you know, we'll see that reflected in the, in the ballots. We know that uh, a lot of sectors do require quick attention, like healthcare, for example, the economy, agriculture. I mean, those will be our first priority, even security, because we know that uh, recently, there has been a surge uh, in, 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 the, in crimes in this country. So quite a spectrum of uh, really issues to look at. Uh. Really, a very good example to the ordinary Gambians that uh, you will not be a bully, that whatever you do will be able to be ready for you. So, 
GRTA Selection Night Special the Gambia votes 2021 presidential elections from voting to counting. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers. This is Election Night on GRTS. I am Abdul C. And our team of panelists, experts here, welcome back too. We just received uh, 
Serin Fallonjai, statistician and international development economist. Mr. Njai, welcome to the forum. As they say, the more the merrier, so you'll add spice to this discussion. So we start with you straight. Uh, we've been looking at socioeconomic data of the Gambia, the population demographics, the political parties, the registered number of voters and other things. And we have the conviction that all these politicians are here because they love the country and they are aspiring to help develop this country. With your experience in development, what do you think the Gambia or these politicians, whoever wins, can do to move the country forward? Um, thank you very much, Abdullah, and um, good evening, viewers and listeners. Um, thank you for inviting me uh, to contribute my input to this panel. Of course, as you know, I'm a veteran of this. I've been, you know, part of this for a very, very long time. For the last two years, I wasn't here, but I'm, I'm happy to be back. But also happy that that there are other people that are. Uh, um, stepping up yeah. what I've been doing. Now, coming specifically to your question on what the country needs in terms of socioeconomic development. Yeah. I mean, I believe the Gambia, like every other, um, every other developing country, is faced with a number of challenges. And of course, this has been made much more difficult with the outset of COVID-19 that we have been grappling with. Yeah. Really from my experience, you know, in eliminating not and countries are facing and the Gambia is in the economic aspect health, including education, in being away and being back. Is the issue of the young people. I think this country really needs to be serious about addressing the issues of young people if we want to move forward. <laughs> By that, of course, again, there are many, many things that we can talk about there. Maybe we, maybe we can talk about it as, as we move along, hmm. but I think that's one issue. What are, what are those issues, key issues um, for young one, people? The key issue is employment. Hmm. I mean, youth employment, I think it's a major issue that needs to be addressed. Hmm. But then we know to address employment, the, uh, I think when we look at it, our educational system on employment. So informal em uh, employment, or t I mean TVET, vocational education are some of the things I think we really need to focus on if we want to. We know traditionally it's changing, and I believe policies in the past had helped to change that. Mm. But then addressing the specific needs of young people, particularly females, uh, I mean, is yes, this is. I, I, I should of the policies that was adopted in the past to encourage girls to go to school. I mean, there are other strategies also that are big, I mean, uh, employed like recently I have a, about the metages. <laughs> but all these are meant to sort of like help, encourage them to go to school and retain them in school. But for me, the emphasis is on we need to get them prepared, for, I mean, uh, given the adequate and right type of training. Okay, we'll get, uh, we'll get back to you. Esa, can you look at the dashboard? Yes, uh, very well. I think that's one of the very important data here, statistics that we have put together. 2021 20, race. I mean, uh, this, is, this is the key data for 2021. 20, uh, we have uh, the incumbent, uh, Adama Barrow. Let's just hope a little bit over uh, Adama and show you some of uh, the details about uh, Barrow. Barrow, I mean, is age 56. He was born in Mankamankunda, and that is in the Upper River region of the country. And uh, Barrow, as we know, is running for the election for a second time. He came to power after defeating long-term leader Yahya Jami in 2016. Barrow's NPP is a new political party backed by other uh, parties and uh, some dozen uh, independent presidential aspirants. And then we move on and look at uh, Usainu Dabo, ANM. Usainu Dabo was born uh, in 1948. He's age uh, 73. He's the oldest uh, candidate as far as this 2021 race is concerned. He was born in Dobo in the central uh, uh, river region. Yes? Maybe you need to explain that the names are in alphabetical order. Yes, the names are in alphabetical order. Indeed, uh, that is quite... Whatever a candidate scores will automatically change. So we'll be seeing, I mean, uh, their figures right here and then we have uh, the leaderboard down there it will be showing us bars as to how the candidates are performing uh, the night progresses so we move on and look at uh Usainu Dabo very briefly back to Dabo yes let's look at Dabo very briefly let's hover over him Dabo like I said age 76 and uh, this is his fifth attempt 
at the presidency. He was in the race in 2006, I mean, in 2001, and in 2006, and then 2011. So uh, moving forward, uh, we move on and look at the next uh, candidate, Esam Baifal. Esam Baifal is the only independent candidate in the race. He was born in Bonda, Esafal. He is running for the first time. We have two first-time runners, Esam Baifal and Abdullah Ibrahim Jame of the National Unity Party. We will look at Mr. Uh, Jame later on. But in the meantime, let's look at uh, Mama Kande. Mama Kande is age 56. Uh, Mr. Kande was born in Sare Birom. Sare Birom is in the Upper River region. He comes from the same region with the incumbent uh, Adam Abaro. So, his 2016 bid for the presidency was unsuccessful. So, this is his second attempt, Abdullah, uh, at the uh, I mean, at the, at, the, at the presidency. So, let's see what happens tonight, and then move on to uh, one of the newcomers as far as the race is concerned. Mm -hmm. Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, born in Brikama in the West Coast region. Well, it's a newcomer to uh, Gambian politics, and. Uh, the final candidate we'll be looking at tonight is a uh, National Assembly member for uh, Serekunda. His party has been in the game since the 80s, uh, interestingly. And uh, he took over from Sidi Ajata as the presidential candidate for DOI. So you look at the key stats, I mean, uh, key facts. Uh, 57, this percentage here, 57. So their male counterparts, 416,839, constituting 43%. Uh, Seven administrative areas, 15 casting their ballots. So like I said, we have leaderboard right there. Once we start getting the results from the Independent Electoral Commission, yeah. we will be updating it. And uh, it will be I've looked at uh, 2016, which was uh, the election that precedes this 2021 uh, one edition. So we will look at our 2011 brief briefly and see how the candidates perform. So looking at the top, you will realize that this is data compiled for the 2011 presidential election. So we begin with, uh, the, let's, let's move back a little bit and look at uh, the, 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 the key stats, the number of registered voters and how, before moving on to see how the uh, candidates perform. So fantastic. Let's see how the, uh, what were the registered voters. 29 people were registered in the 2011 presidential elections. So, I mean, you look at the number of votes. Over 700,000 people were registered, but we had 657,787. Uh, it was very impressive compared to uh, 2016. Uh, you were registered turn out to vote in the 2011 presidential elections. We had the APRC uh, of former President uh, Jame and the, uh, in the 2011 presidential elections, just like we had in 2016 as well. But it is different uh, this year. We have a total of six in the 2021 uh, presidential election. So the APRC in Banjul, which is the smallest administrative area, with a scored 12,761 votes in 2011, and that account. And then NRPP, led by Usainu uh, Dabo, in 2011, 816 votes, 7% in 2011. And in Basse, 2011, Jame uh, went a notch further, scoring 70% of the votes uh, cast in the Basse administrative area in 2011. And the UDP, uh, 7,961, accounting for 10%. Uh, so you see, in the Basse administrative area, the NRP had more votes than the UDP in 2011. So we look at the biggest administrative area, which is Brikama, uh, where Jame himself come from. This is 2011. Jame got 156, if you compare it to what he got in Basse, uh, to 72% uh, of the votes. NRP, Hamad Bar, 21,269, 10%. Hamad um, also, Kama area uh, administrative area is concerned percent of the total number of votes cast in the uh, Brikama administrative area. So Jame, as you can see, one in Banjul, one in Basse, one in Brikama in 72 percent. So the same number of for Jame in Janjambure, 15 percent of the total in 2011. And the UDP, uh, Hussein Udab, also comes from the Central River region. We remember we talked about his uh, accounting for 13 percent. So in so Kalifing, which is one of the uh, bigger administrative areas apart from Brikama, Kalifing has always been 1,890, 64 percent. So he's the, for the NRP, 19,217 votes were cast for Hamad Bar in 2011, 13% of the total number of votes cast. And the UDP, 35,627, 23% of the total number of votes cast uh, for Davo in the Carnifing administrative area in 2011. And in the Kerawan administrative area, 59,068 votes for Jame, area. Jame got 78% of the total number of votes that were cast 
in the Kerewan administrative area. And then the NRP, 6,797, as you can see on your screen, those of you watching television, 9% of the 9% percent of the votes. So that one, as you can see, UDP 10,222 in Kerawan, it got 13% of the total number of votes also cast in the state of area in terms of voter power. 269, 71%. Uh, Jame was popular in 2011 in the Mansakonko administrative area. He got uh, more than half of the total number of votes that we are cast. Uh, percentage point, as far as the 2011 election, 52, 23% of the total number. 550 votes in total in the 2011 elections and he won 72 percent of the entire votes that were cast in the 2011 presidential elections so uh, that is uh jame for you there in 2011 and then nrp hamad ba uh, 73,060 votes 11 percent of the uh, total number of votes that were cast in 2011 and the udp got over a hundred thousand the number stands at 114,177 uh, votes and 17% of the total number of votes. So Jamie Imaj winner of the 2011 presidents. And he won Sankara. in all the regions. He won in all the regions, as you can see. 73% uh, in Banjul, 77% in Basse, 72% in Brikama, 72% equally in Janjambure, Kanifing 64%. Uh, so his lowest percentage points were in the Kanifing administrative area, which is an urban area. And then in Kerawan, 68, that is where he got his highest percentage points and then in the Mansakonko administrative area equally Jame won with 71 percent and the next election he lost yes the next election so he lost in 2016 third of, Th of fortunes most definitely definitely <laughs> definitely so you look at uh 2021 just a little bit let's go back to uh 2011 let's go back to 2011 very briefly uh 2011 yes we have 2011 so you look at these candidates Jame is not in the race for 2021 I mean, uh, Hamad is not in the race for 2021, so uh, Dabo is the only survivor as far as the 2021 uh, race is concerned for candidates that contested in the 2011 presidential elections. Great, Issa. Yes, That's more you. than clear. Baba? Yes. You've been reading the statistics. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That was his pick. Yeah, that was his pick. Mm -hmm. That time, in 2011, mm -hmm. the, my, even the, the, the turnout mm -hmm. was very high, 83 percent. 83 percent. Okay, as compared to just about 59 percent or so in mm -hmm. 2016. Yeah, in 2016. Yeah, five, five years later, mm -hmm. okay, the turnout was very high in 2011. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, given the the total number of votes cast. He pulled about seventy-two percent of the votes. Mm. Okay, it was very, very impressive. Okay, as opposed to his closest mm. rival, because Dava at that time was just about uh, seventeen, or something like that. Something like seventeen. Okay, so Jabez's popularity was at its peak mm. by 2011. Then, as you said, okay, just five years later, later, he he, he, he actually he lost. Mm. Why? Mm. Okay. Good question. What went wrong mm -hmm. between 2011 and 2016? Mm -hmm. That led to his mm -hmm. uh, losing the 2016 election. What went wrong? Mm -hmm. okay. so, say, what went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what went wrong? <laughs> well, I, I agree. <laughs> it is quite a miserable mm -hmm. uh, turn of fortunes. A turn of fortunes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, what went wrong? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's still current affairs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still. Uh, you know, in the realm of uh, you, the journalist, it's, and, it's complicated and, and politician. It's not that history. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, poor economy. Um, you know, the human rights record. Um, you know, poor international relations. Uh, you know, and I think you know the very, very. Um, and maybe the coalition too. Politicians coming. Well, uh, as I'm coming to that, you know, the very, very. Um, uh, you know. And the very on, like what I call an illiterate, mm -hmm. you know, handling, you know, of the solar sanding um, incident you know, protests. Mm -hmm. You know, I think um, you know that was handled, you know, quite illiterately. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, that led to, you know, so many other things. You know, which finally also uh, made the political leaders to coalesce. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, into uh, um, like opposition. Uh, you know, against 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 his regime, but like I said, that is still in the domain of 
of current affairs. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. Yeah. Palu, what do you think went wrong? Um, is speaking. Uh, I'm not sure if I can say much about that because that was the time that I mean I, I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm um, really. Yeah. But what I want to say here is that I believe, yes, we need to look at make comparisons with the past. Mm -hmm. But then the political landscape has changed so much. If you look at what we have this year, even compared to 2011, I mean, other than PDOIS, Ali Fasala, and GMC, uh, oh, sorry, not GMC. GDC. GDC, to some extent. Mm -hmm. Everything else has changed. Because even, of course, DAO is here, but then in uh, the last election, it was part of a coalition. Mm -hmm. So I think we maybe need to be a little bit careful here in terms of comparing what happened the last time and what's happening now. Mm -hmm. Because I believe the landscape has, has changed so much. Mm -hmm. But yet still, you know, let, let, let's see how things turn out today. And mm -hmm. then we, we can maybe go back and, and be able to put it into context. Mm -hmm. That's just what I can say. Okay, on PDO's Halifa Salah, like Sidi used to be the presidential candidate. Salifa has taken over from him. Is that a sign of internal democracy within the party or? Awesome. Well, mm -hmm. if you ask me, mm -hmm. I'll say yes. Mm -hmm. You know, generational. Mm -hmm. You know, it's generational. Mm -hmm. Sidia is, you know, older. I think it's really quite refreshing mm -hmm. to have that kind of development in Gambian politics also. Mm -hmm. Because um, what we are used to, really, you know, from Perenjai's time mm -hmm. to Sadawala's time, it's really this uh, one human being, I mean, uh, you know, symbolizing the party, you know, reincarnating, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a whole political party, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think, um, you know, in the case of, you know, PDOIS, um, that has not been the case. I mean, we have seen what you can call like a generational, you know, change mm -hmm. in, inside the party. And from what you know, we are hearing from the news media, Halifa will not be a candidate in another election. Mm -hmm. So it means that um, you know there will be like another generational you know change of party, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is good news for Gambian democracy mm -hmm. because it, um, it you know it's an internal mechanism, mm -hmm. like an internal I mean I mean dynamism, okay, mm -hmm. um, you know which I mean I mean I mean I mean like supports like internal democracy, you know, uh, uh, because it's important, you know, we have democracy, you know, at the supra, you know, level, mm -hmm. uh, you know, national level, but we have democracy also at the micro level, mm -hmm. inside the parties, and I think, I mean, I mean, um, it, you know, even within the PPP, uh, you know, that has been a big issue, mm -hmm. in Jawara from really 1959 to 1994. Mm -hmm. um, in a period of, you know, 35 years, the party only held, I mean, five congresses. Five. Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, from the Cap Island, you know, party congress in '61, mm -hmm. there was no party congress of the PPP. I mean, until the one at Fajara Hotel in 1977. Mm -hmm. So, like. You know, really a period of you know 16 years. I mean, I mean, you know, the PPP, you know, diligently avoided. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, like self introspection. <laughs> you know, and, and like renewing mm. of the of the of the you know internal you know structures you know and personalities. Mm -hmm. You see. And well, why do you think it's difficult for political parties to change? Uh, well, uh, well, you know, uh, you know the big man syndrome. Mm. You know, I mean, I mean the big man syndrome. Uh, you know, you form a party. Well, I mean, ordinarily, uh, no one human being can form a party. Mm. <laughs> you know, but that is how we say it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, you form a party. You reincarnate the party. You symbolize it. You know, re you represent it. And as long as you're around. Really, works. everybody identifies you, mm. uh, you, you know, with the party. I mean, I mean, I mean, um, you know, with Perenja is it, a good example, mm. you know, and I am particularly qualified to say this because I'm a biographer of, 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 of Perenja. Mm. Um, this was an issue, okay? At a time when everybody knew 
that he was the problem, that he was really the problem. Mm. Okay? Yet, uh, nobody could remove him. Nobody. You know, and, and really, that had a very, very, mm. I mean, like, you know, like corrosive, I mean, impact mm. on the fortunes of the UP. Mm. You see? Yes. Yes, Fal. I, I think maybe I'll just want to add a little bit to that. Um, because honestly, I believe in this country, one of the issues we have is what, I, what we call succession planning. Mm -hmm. When you are the leader, whether a political party at institution or so, there needs to be a plan for somebody to take over you know, when you. you leave. Mm -hmm. But what we tend to have in this country is people tend to continue on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But when we see it in institutions. People retire and then they have to come back and contract it. You know, we see it with the political parties. It is the same person on and on and on. And once that person leaves, the party almost crumbles. So I think this is something that, you know, we really need to re-examine ourselves as leaders. You know, no matter whether you are in a political party or an institution or anywhere else, we really need to look at, at take succession planning seriously if we want, you know, what we are Why, why are we not taking it seriously, you think? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, probably as, as, as he's saying, people tend to sort of look at themselves. Yeah. Or at times they even tend to think that being indispensable is something, you know, that they want. And of course, I mean, all of us, we know in management, I mean, that is bad management. Of course. As a manager, when you leave and what you've been doing continues, then that yeah, is a sign manager. of, you know, good management. Mm -hmm. But if you're in an institution, you leave and it crumbles. Or whenever they need something, they have to go and get you back from home. That's, not, okay. that's, that's not good management. What is the way out of that? Because it seems it's a common problem in many other countries. Within this yes, but, but, but then, I mean, as I say, mm. we need to be able to have the confidence to bring up somebody, mm. you know, to take over. I will use myself as an example. When the DJ called me and I said, well, I've been away for 10 years. Mm. I believe um, it is time or during this period somebody else should have been. You know, be able, and I'm happy. I mean, I've, the last time I was here, mm. Baba was here. There are other people, but I think like what we need to do is prepare young people who can take over from us. We are not here forever. People have to realize that you're not here forever, and whether you are not here or not, life continues. So that is, I, I think, it's a mindset. It's a mind. We need to change our mindset in terms of, you know, management and continuity of the institutions or whatever uh, area we find ourselves in. Okay. And also, uh, I, think, I think there's also uh, like a primordial um, aspect to this, you know, to this. I mean, we have this idea of the, you know, the boor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the boor is the boor. As long as the boor lives, you know, board. you know the board leads. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, um, and, and like, so, uh, like he said, it's the mindset. So it's a cultural thing. Well, that's a cultural, you know, like primordial. It's mm. like, uh, yes, mm. uh, you know, cultural. Mm. Yes, you know, the board is there. Mm. Um, nobody talks about the board mm. um, when the board is not here. Mm. You, they are not even you contemplate. Mm. <laughs> you know, like a scenario when the bull is not no, there. It's not there. Uh, although in essence, and one day you all know there. that a day will come mm -hmm. where the bull will not be there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and um, uh, you know, in the colonial, I mean, period, for example, mm -hmm. I think there was this very, very interesting, you know, examples that the, the colonialists used to, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, so us, but maybe indirectly. Mm -hmm. For example, um, between 1900 to 1965. The Gambia has had, you know, close to, I mean, 30 uh, governors. Mm. Some would come two years, 18 months, you know, they are moved. They go, mm. uh, you know. I, I mean, uh, I mean, I, 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 I would think that would have been like, a lesson mm. for you know our post-independence. I mean, I mean, governance. Uh, you know, uh, that you are just there, you know, for a while, um, and then, like I said, you know, somebody is in the pipeline. Mm. Uh, you know, to take up the, you know, mantle, to take up the running of the affairs of the party. You know, Jehumpa, you know, didn't get it correct, mm. you know, with his Congress party. You know, and it was really an avant-garde uh, political formation, you know, very progressive. Mm. You know, a lot of networks between Krumah, Sikuture, and so on. Mm. You know, Reverend Faye, mm. you know, who formed the first political party here, the Democratic Party, 
uh, you know, couldn't get what, like what he said, this, you know, this succession planning right, mm -hmm. such that um, by the early 60s, you, you know, the party really, uh, you know, had, 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 you know, collapsed. And I've just mentioned the case of, uh, you know, Per and ICUP. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it the same as the liberation fighters in Africa, like least liberation movements, when they liberate the country, they feel entitled, they stay longer than next, and chaos comes up. <laughs> You look at Angola, the NPLF is still there. You go to Zimbabwe, you still Mozambique. have them there. Mozambique, the same thing. Guinea-Bissau, they've been on and off, yeah. but they still feel entitled, and it's not helping. Namibia, yes. they're still there. Yeah. Mm. I think, I think, you are right. It's a sense of entitlement mm -hmm. to power. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with countries like Guinea-Bissau, for example, you know, I, I mean, I mean, they had to fight a guerrilla war mm -hmm. of 11 years. Um, you know, but when you talk about societies, you know, like ours, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have to do that mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to become independent. Uh, but like I said, it's the same, you know, sense of entitlement, mm -hmm. you know, too. And 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 just coming back to the bull mentality, mm -hmm. I mean, a bull. It's indispensable. It's indispensable. Mm -hmm. And nobody contemplates, mm -hmm. even in your quieter moments, a scenario where the bull is not it's there. It's not there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at in England in 1945, after all that Churchill did and with all that fame, he lost the elections. And De Gaulle, and De Gaulle too, yes, I mean, I mean, and De Gaulle, you know, he helped to free France, but uh, you know, at the, you know, after the Normandy landings, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in 1944, mm -hmm. I mean, De Gaulle um, led the French resistance. You know, to drive away, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, the Nazi, you know, from Paris. Mm -hmm. In 1946, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there were elections, and the French mm -hmm. tell, uh, told him, well, uh, you were a good military leader, but we are not going to vote for you. Mm -hmm. And really, he had to be in the political doldrums. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, like for another, I mean, I mean, I mean, 12 years, uh, you know, to the elections in 58, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the French to bring back the goal, uh, you know, because the country was in crisis, you know, and so on. Yes. Okay. Yes. Bawa, yes. you take on that, this success on crisis for parties and other leaders? Yeah, I think the, mm. the, what you said, oh, mm. the, uh, if you look at the, the, the history of the political parties, mm -hmm. from, the, from the first republic, the, 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 the UDP, mm. the UP, the, 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 the United the Party, UP, mm. the PPP, and so on. Now, the UP was. Uh, head, uh, uh, led by Ped Jack. Okay? When Ped demands, what happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The UDP was no more. The UP. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now you even hear uh, the UDP. UP during the First Republic announced at the Congress that he was going to. Why, if he if George should be, so they have to stay in politics. Okay? Why were they doing that? There's succession yeah. plans. Maybe, maybe they were not well groomed mm. by Jawara to, to succeed him when he did. Absolutely. Okay? Yes. So that was why they, even before the the next election, there was this abortive coup, mm -hmm. 1981, by Kukoy Sambasanya. Mm. Okay. So if things were planned, there was this successful plan at that time. Mm. Jawara's announcement at the PPP Congress at that time that he was going to, to, to step down would have been a welcome idea mm. by the party militants. At least there's somebody below mm. on the ground who can take over from him. Mm. Absolutely. That was not there, okay? Yes. Mm. In fact, I think I think I would just want to add, he yeah. is absolutely right. Mm. In fact, um, it was exactly 30 years ago, I mean, I mean 4th December 1991, this famous Mansa <laughs> PPP Congress. Although, I, I, everybody keeps saying it's 92, mm. but maybe because it was so close to the election, uh, you know, to the new year. But it was December 91, mm. and and you know, IBA Kelep Asamba, who was then the PPP, you know, president, national president, you, you know, got up um, to go to the restroom. Mm -hmm. After Jawara said, "I need a change. I'm tired. I don't want to be a candidate in the next elections." And exactly what IBA Kelep Asamba told him was, "No." You caught us unprepared. Mm. Yes, you know. I mean, those were his, you know, his exact words. I'm just doing, you know, I'm writing an article on that, you know. Mm. So, so I was just doing the, you know, archival research recently. Those were his exact words. No, I mean, Sadauda, you cannot go because you caught us unprepared. Mm. Like he said, you know, the issue of success and plan. But having said that, 
our pre-colonial states mm -hmm. had success on planning. I mean, I mean, like if you look at, uh, you know, the state of Nyomi, mm -hmm. you had a very, very interesting, um, uh, you know, succession. I mean, I mean, I mean, politics. You had three ruling houses: mm -hmm. the Sonkos, the Manes, and the Jamnes. Mm -hmm. And it was rotational. Now, when a Sonko king dies, like a Jamme will come. Mm -hmm. When you know, that Jamme king dies. The manners will provide, mm -hmm. you know, the next king. But of course, um, you have to convince the council of elders mm -hmm. that your candidate is worthy of being king of Nyomi. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was a very, very interesting. I mean, I mean, I mean, succession politics you know, in Nyomi, and, and like some of these pre-colonial states, um, also or societies, you had this. I mean, division of labor. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, I mean, for the Silas, you know, Islamic state of Combo. You know, which he declared in 1875. I mean, the tourists would be the clergy. Mm. You know, I mean, I mean, just like in today's Iran. I mean, I mean, the Ayatollah and the Mullahs, mm -hmm. whilst the Davos, you know, would be the heading politics, like yes. the secular. I mean, I mean, I mean, political I mean, heads. Yeah, the politics. You know, the Alcalo and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, so really, in in pre-colonial societies, um, there was um, like you know a lot of you know, interesting ideas mm -hmm. about the succession planning, you know, smooth transfer of leadership, uh, you know, in, 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 like in some of these states. Yes. Okay. So it's still, maybe our political leaders can learn from the past. <laughs> <laughs> always, yes, always. I think if I may come, come yes. here, it's, it's not just the leaders. Mm -hmm. I think it's both the leaders mm -hmm. and the people and themselves. The people. Mm -hmm. Because for the leaders, they may have this sense of being indispensable, mm. you know. And uh, in fact, some of the things that they have talked about, a lot of people say that actually they were stage managed mm -hmm. just to see how people would react. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know it happened to, 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 to Jame mm -hmm. when he actually said he was not going to contest the elections. Mm -hmm. You know, and then people came from all over mm, to see. beg him yes, to, yes. to contest. Mm -hmm. I mean, those could be state managed mm -hmm. because the leader actually wants to, but wants to legitimize that. Mm -hmm. That's one, one part. Mm -hmm. The other part is the people themselves, because they may be in a privileged position with that leader, mm -hmm. and they would see their position threatened if that person goes. Mm -hmm. So they would do everything possible to make sure that that person is entrained. So it is on both sides, mm. and it goes ha, back to what I said. Has that to do with poverty? Oh, sorry. Has it to do with poverty? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say benefit. Mm -hmm. Just poverty, <laughs> but benefits. personal benefits. People are looking at their personal benefits. If today you are the head of state, mm -hmm. and I'm very close to you, mm -hmm. and I would not want to see you move because I'm not sure if he comes in, mm -hmm. what position I hold. So I'm looking at my own selfish interest, and therefore mm -hmm. perpetuate you because of my own interest. Mm -hmm. It may be poverty, it may be power, it may be, you know, there, there, will be the that are at, there are many things that are at play here. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's both on the side of the leaders and on the side of the people mm -hmm. themselves. Uh, now, uh, now, I think it's, um, I mean, actually touched on a very, very important point, particularly um, because, you know, coming back to the famous Mansa Congo APPP Congress, Congress of 91, well, um, uh, there are reports, mm -hmm. and, and these are you know, archival you know, evidence, mm -hmm. that when Jawara changed his mind and said, okay, mm -hmm. now I'm sorry, I will not retire. And he said, those um, who shed tears mm -hmm. after he made the announcement that he was going to retire, mm -hmm. you know, got promoted. Mm -hmm. um, those who kept calm, mm -hmm. You know, we are motionless. Mm, we are indifferent. Got fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, like a good example is Nyama Sarasane Bojang, you know, our first elected woman MP. Mm -hmm. They said after the announcement, you know, she kept calm, you know, she didn't shed tears, you know, she didn't, I mean, I mean, went, um, you know, she didn't go into hysteria, mm -hmm. you know, and because of that, in the elections of 92, the PPP refused to give her mm -hmm. the flag for her combo not seat, you know, maybe, which she held maybe for, the things for 10 not, years. She wasn't loyal enough. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> just to confirm his point that maybe it's a test, some of these things. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, we, we, we come down to the nominations, that's the recent one. Some were rejected, two went to court and won. What is the interpretation? Hazum? Oh. 
<laughs> well, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think um, it's good. Mm. It's good for democracy. Mm. Well, okay. the rule of law. It shows the legal system is. Yes, uh, the legal system is working. Mm. And in fact, I think it's good for people to go to court. Mm -hmm. Mr. C. Mm -hmm. I mean, the more you know, people go to court, you know, to you know, test, you know, our our our, our legal system, you know, the better. And I think this time around. Um, to our happiness and to our pride, the legal system has been found, you know, to be really up to task. And, and, and that is also another, you know, strength of our republic, um, you know, an impartial, you know, strong, I mean, I mean, you know, legal system. But what I really wanted you to, to underline, um, um, you know, during the nomination process, is really the calmness, you know, with which it happened. And that was really the very beginning mm. of this peaceful uh, approach mm. to the today's event. Mm. The denominations um, went calmly, followed by 23 days. Um, in my recording, this is the longest serving electoral campaign. I mean, campaign the longest, period. you know, the most, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, um, like the longest, you know, political mm. campaign mm. of 23 days. And with more and candidates. And it went peacefully. Mm. You know, and I think here our political leaders deserve commendation. Mm. You know, the six candidates. Mm. Um, it looks like they have been able to chaperone mm. their followers to obey the law, mm. be law abiding, and to maintain you know peaceful conduct. Mm. And look at the elections today. I mean, I mean, voting has just ended, mm. but well, I, you know, I've been offline for the past three hours. But it looks like. There has been no incident, mm. you know, of trouble. So really, you see peaceful nomination, peaceful campaign, campaign. peaceful election, election day. Mm. So uh, where can things go wrong? Mm. Yeah, it, definitely, I think I think it's a source for for, for happiness. Is um, all of us to be proud of, of the record, um, you know, that the Gambia is setting. Uh, you know, in the, in the past, you know, three weeks, you okay. know, as far as, you know, peaceful elections are concerned. Mm. Well, I, I think, I mean, in as much as I agree with him, mm. but I, I think also we need to recognize and admit that our, our democracy is in transition mm. and that there is need for us to try to improve on some of these things, mm. the electoral laws, etc. Because I believe there may be some things, some loopholes, maybe some uh, things that need to be improved upon. Mm. Let us learn from it and see how best we can improve on this so that it doesn't happen, you know, I mean, uh, the next time. Mm. Uh, for me, this is what I, you know, I learned from this that maybe after all this, let's go back and see why did this happen and how do we prevent it from happening, you know, I mean, an, an, another time by improving the systems, by improving the laws, by making them watertight so that, you know, these things do not happen again. Great. Uh, Baba? Yes. Well, uh, yeah, I don't think I have much to say. Uh, just that, of course, as he said, uh, during the campaign period, for the 23 days campaign period, there has not been any report of uh, okay. violence or incidents uh, anywhere so the campaign went smoothly all the presidential can uh, candidates went through the land and better of the country and there has not been any incidents of uh, uh, violence, violence yeah. now today also uh, since the pools opened i think by eight, 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 eight o'clock mm -hmm. up to the close so at by five well we've not had any incidents as such mm -hmm. so i think uh, that is something that Gambians need to be proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, uh, we know Gambians are peaceful. Mm -hmm. The Gambia is a peaceful country. Uh, Gambians are known for uh, maintaining peace. In fact, uh, <clears throat> this is why the country has been uh, labeled as the smiling coast, coast. of Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, at the end of the day, whoever uh, emerged as the winner, mm -hmm. Of course, I think under his administration, this uh, smiling coast uh, syndrome will still continue to prevail. We will still be the smiling coast of Africa. We will still maintain our peace. Okay, and uh, of course uh, we have uh, 
uh, different people. We live uh, in terms of religion. We have different religions. Mm -hmm. We have uh, different tribes living together. But uh, we intermarry. We do everything together. So we accept each other and uh, live peacefully together, which is very rare in many countries, particularly in Africa. So we need to commend ourselves for that, and we to nurture this uh, and uh, try to maintain it for the rest of mankind. Mm. Is that because we are a small country, nuclear family set up? Yeah, it could be. It could have uh, some relation to the size of the country. Mm. It's a very small country. Everybody okay. knows the other. Yeah. I say everyone knows the other. Everyone person. knows each other. It's a very mm. small country. Mm. Okay, everyone knows each other, and uh, we are related mm. either directly or indirectly. There is that relationship. Mm. Okay, between us. Okay. Not you much. You may think that you are, you are not related to somebody. If you go back and uh, dig, mm. maybe there is this uh, relationship between uh, almost everybody. Okay, so we are all related. If you hurt somebody in Banjul here, maybe it may affect somebody in Basse. Mm -hmm. so, so that relationship is there. Yeah. So we have to, uh, uh, that, that, that's, that's one of the reasons. Yes. So we have okay. to keep the smiling cool smiling yes, forever. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, because I, I think another reason is really, um, I, mean, I mean, it's part of our, our inheritance. Mm. Uh, you know, I think this is really one of the great things mm. that Sadauda yeah, has bequeathed to you know, this republic. Um, his style um, has always been, uh, you know, that of mm. dialogue, consensus, mm. you know, and peaceful approach, you see. So really, all these candidates, mm. you know, grew up under the Sadawda, I mean, I mean, I mean, regime. Government. Mm. Uh, you know, they, you know, grew up, all, you know, the six of them, they grew up mm. knowing nothing but peace, democracy, respect for rule of law, mm -hmm. okay, free and fair elections, and so on. You know, and, and, and this was the 1970s and 80s, mm -hmm. when the norm in Africa was military dictatorship, mm -hmm. I mean, political prisoners, mm -hmm. I mean, firing squads, mm -hmm. you know, mass hangings, you know, like Sekutura used to do in Guinea, and so on. But, I mean, during Sadawra's regime, mm -hmm. this country, a very, very good reputation, mm. you know, as a country at peace with itself, you know, as a country at peace with her neighbors, as a country in peace with the international community, okay? Mm. I mean, I mean, I think um, that, you know, kind of inheritance also, um, you know, explains why we have been able to conduct ourselves so peacefully, mm. I mean, I mean, I mean, during this electoral cycle, I mean, so far, because you know, all of them grew up under that context. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, really, you don't need uh, uh, like a psychoanalysis, <laughs> you know, to, to, to understand, you know, to explain that. You know, because the context mm -hmm. you grew up in, mm -hmm. you know, matters a lot. The environment that and, you grew and in, it's very, very healthy. Yeah. That all, all of them, you know, came of age, mm -hmm. you know, during the Jawara regime, knowing nothing but peace and tranquility. Mm -hmm. I think that is what, as political leaders, you know, you know these six candidates have been able. Uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to imbibe and also, you know, to imbue into their, I mean, okay. I mean, I mean followers. Thank you very much, Hasum and the rest of the panelists. A reminder that he, this is election uh, night on GRTS. We're going for a short break. We'll be back. December 2016 will forever remain a historic landmark in the political history of our country. The Gambia decided the 22 years dictatorial reign of former President Yahya Jame was extraordinary brought to an end through the ballot against his odds that he will never be defeated through the ballot. Since the advent of democratic dispensation in 2016, Gambians have enjoyed the freedom to express their opinions on issues of national concern, 
dream of every Gambian. Perhaps the prolonged oppression on the Jame forced the citizens into an unbearable silence. The dawn of a democratic dispensation opens floodgates for undue or unguarded expression of opinions and subsequently developing into rampant hate speech and tribal bigotry on and offline. 2021 is a critical year for the country. At its tail end, it's the first general elections in a democratic environment. Interest among citizens, especially the young people, becomes high. This is very important for the ever-effective young people participation in politics the country ever hacked for. In this documentary, Despiring Voices, Inspiring Voices, The Gambia, by Peace Hop The Gambia, with support from United Nations Peace Building through UNFPA The Gambia, we spotlight the understandable fears of the people as well as voices which inspire hope and resilience among people amidst a charged political atmosphere in the lead in to December 4th presidential election. The Gambia has been famous in the region and globally for its warmth and serenity, thus the name The Smiling Coast of Africa. Despite the challenges of transition since 2017, Global Peace Index this year ranked the Gambia as the fifth most peaceful country in Africa, behind Mauritius, Ghana, Botswana and Sierra Leone. Historically, the tranquility of the small West African country positioned it well within the sub-region and the continent. Citizens of other countries far and near found refuge here when their nations had political unrest or are in the country for all the reasons such as business, employment, education, just to name a few. This accomplishment on the Gambia many admirers. How the country has been peaceful has really um, positioned us well in terms of investment, in terms of how well we have progressed as a nation, but also in terms of how, um, how much we are able to uh, achieve for ourselves. Because I mean, if we are not a peaceful country, then it is going to be very difficult. Our progress to be really um, something that other countries would want to admire or even be proud of. The Gambia is also associated with Teranga, a profound exhibition of hospitality believed to be found only in the Senegambian region. The people are socially needed and as such do everything together for generations. Every Gambian prides in this and would not trade it for anything else. Nobody is in the Gambia, the country whereby everybody lives together as one family. So Gambia, Lulu and Yohamon, the Lulu Bokon is one of the reasons Kuneka or you smile in course. Gambia Cairo began it. Katu, near your quick Cairo began. Kalam Fanyan and Kapulim Fanyan. What is it? Bokam Kaira Bati Banku. So left of Cairo continue. Handing the Sarbia Carrefo Nad, Cairo in your continue. Because Nimma Market of Banku, the Kukianola, Nimbati or Montebeti, Megan at the Fero Janaka in Bad Balundi. So Nimma Banku, Marcel Conceit, it came Mirawa. They came Mirakuru, but they came Mirakuru and Maga Marcel. What is it? You on the left of Tenko and in Banku. At the very least, Gambians should consolidate gains of our forebears, respecting diversity and the strong pillars they've installed for peaceful coexistence. Building peaceful communities across the country should be a collective responsibility, and Gambians must not have a predilection for anything short of harmony. Well, my opinion is we should try and maintain peace and tranquility in this country. It's known for that, but at the same time, uh, not having peace is not an option. So therefore, we urge everyone to uh, behave peacefully and act peacefully and maintain peace. In a few days, Gambians will be casting their votes to select the president for the next five years. It is important to recognize that in a democracy, all citizens have the right and responsibility to participate in election processes of their communities. Candidates have the right to compete in a fair election in which each player has an equal chance to succeed. <laughs> Ah, 
Antay lang kita lang na Cairo sa batin. Bangkoka. Cairo man yun sa Bangkoka. Cairo na rin Bangkoka. Oo, kung isa ako yung nori, isa sa ito nori. Matol na mali rin Bangkoka. Wala o dola o maninka o sereru. Matol na mali rin dola o Bangkoka. Kati e fayo, akanala e tamo. Bantol na mali ka nula kundi. Bantol na mali ka nula kundi. Bantol na mali ka nula kundi. Bantol na mali ka tani wala sa kumoto. Na buwanya, akiri maya ni siya. Buwanya akiri maya. Niyan tayo ngayon sa pati ni Bangkok. Di mahal din bulo ko no. Di nung isla ka ng muto. Isa ka ng muto. Bangkok na ba diari. Pero sa pati ni. Isa ka ng muto. It should be revered on all. Candidates, electorates, party loyalists, and key election stakeholders to ensure the security of everyone and institutions are guaranteed throughout the electoral process. Buga na dal man aksu mo marom yun yip. Mi defender ko a munek a mission whereby yun yip dinan tahaw pur jo pur pur defend this thing. Buga hamne ni yip pong ko am in mind. Elections are ferocious in many societies in the world, given the stakes. Despite the numerous efforts many civil society organizations and other actors, ours has manifested some worrying signs. However, evident of our social setup and cultural background, sacrificing to ensure a peaceful election is not unattainable. As people, united first and foremost by the Gambia, must all sacrifice for the long-term peace and security of the country. In this endeavor, given their important role as source of information for many, traditional and social will be very critical. We should all shun sharing hate speech and negative stereotypes online. Work hand in hand with fellow citizens in the security forces for the tranquility of our beloved country. My message to them will be, first, the political party leaders, that politics comes and goes. And there should not be disparity and disunity among political party leaders. They should make sure that there is free and fair elections. And whoever wins will do what is expected of the person. And then to the political party militants, if you are there to support your political party leader, support in peace and do not cause chaos. For the security forces, I plead to them that they try to control the chaos that political party militants might cause during the campaign period. And then to the media, I plead to them that any message that they have to send, because rumors are easily spread on the internet and on social media, so anything that they have to share should be something that won't cause, uh, won't, won't cause chaos and conflict in the Gambia. Safeguarding our peace is a national responsibility. Fulfill it, you are a patriot. Fail it, you know what that means. Okay, man, media, media. How can I make the people, everybody, understand me? Digga, digga. I should promote more of the positivity than that of the negativity. So, man, my advice to everybody, Monica, we have to be responsible responsible of the things that we say, responsible of the actions that we take, understand, the responsible of everything that we make in. We are the ones who are in the same way. We are the ones who are sick. We are the ones who are sick. We are the ones who are respect. We are the ones who are in the same way. We are the ones who are in the same way. We are Sacrificing for the realization of peaceful communities is incumbent upon all and sundry. Peace and security matter to everyone irrespective of your affiliation. Students and young people innovations of today and hopes of tomorrow should be guaranteed a secured and peaceful environment to learn and realize their fullest potentials. Peace is life. There is no life without peace. Let's see Gambia first. No matter what Gambia will be made. Um, let us not be so concerned about what our individual interests are. I know at the end of the day, all these politicians will want to win. But we should be more concerned about the Gambia. Let's advise our militants, our supporters, to make sure that they are tolerant and accept one another. We are not opponents in, in, in the Gambia. We are just opponents or rivals in politics. But politics will end, but Gambia will be made forever. 
um, because at the end of the day, uh, we have a generation of young people that need stability and peace. Peace can't wait. To engender a peaceful Gambia, this requires strenuous effort from every one of us. Understandably, there are fears, uncertainties around post-electoral violence amongst women, family heads, students, and businessmen. However, we are equally presented with an opportunity once again as Gambians to demonstrate high standard of maturity, patriotism, which is reflective of true citizens of the smiling coast of Africa. Most of the people, in fact, if not all, will agree with me that um, uh, people with um, dis disability or the differently able people, the children and also the elderly people are always vulnerable in terms of um, disputes or any types of you know, violence. As we know, um, uh, most, of the, most of the time, these categories, they suffer directly or indirectly. Yeah, mentally and physically. Because um, uh, what the, 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 the able people can do, uh, maybe the different the able person might find it very difficult to do. And that is maybe the, the, the able people can maybe discard themselves. In term, um, uh, may God forbid if there's any post-election violence or election violence itself. So the different able people, they always suffer. If you look at it properly in most of the countries where this um, kind of incident happened, um, uh, the different able people and also the children and the elderly people suffer drastically. So therefore, we are not praying that, definitely. Nobody is praying that. Yeah, you know, this, for that to happen in our this beloved country, Gambia. But um, uh, we should definitely see how best, how best to see, to make sure there will be no election violence in this country. Because if there is, may God forbid, the different able people will suffer. <laughs> My wish is that uh, despite all those uh, challenges and the uh, strained relations or the struggles and challenges between parties, uh, peace prevails. So the situation is very tense although, but I think uh, Gambians will think wisely. Misinformation and peddling rumors cause panic and mayhem, which by themselves are conflict to human psychology. People should cease spreading fabrications, consult credible authorities for information, and promote social harmony. <laughs> Peace is the foundation of all endeavors to advance a society. If it were a physical commodity, no one would be able to purchase it. Peace improves the psychological well-being of people, enhances freedom and development, and guarantees fundamental rights and dignities. Peace is a combination of different things. It, it means um, the freedom to be able to do um, what I do as well as um, the people around me. It means um, communities being able to interrelate and uh, um, effectively um, mingle um, in a way that would not affect um, individual growth and development. So, I mean, I think for me as a Gambian, uh, as somebody who has lived all my life in the Gambia, it is important that individually we take um, responsibility to um, enhance the peace that is in, in this country. Hate speech and use of uncouth language by political party supporters against your opponents, particularly online, is surging. And this is scary. This attitude is no one's interest. We can politic while we remain respectful and tolerant.
we participate in, in, in the election period, especially during the campaign phase, without any um, violence, to ensure that there is no hate speech, um, and to ensure that um, we support our candidate based on the agenda that they present and respect the other candidates' viewpoints as well. Once we are able to do that, then we will be able to um, in this um, period in a very peaceful manner and come um, December 5th and beyond, it will be um, business as usual in the Gambia without um, any form of violence of, or of that sort. The Gambia is ours. Young people form over 60% of the Gambia's population according to findings. Hence, their influence in any endeavor cannot go unnoticed. The same way, the iniquity, energy, and enthusiasm of young people could be exploited to contribute to political and socio-economic development of their communities. When hoodwinked, they could plunge their country into turmoil of huge proportion. The fear has always been uh, the politicians, uh, you know, using, you know, young people, seeing how vulnerable they are, and you know, you really using them you know, to really cause violence, you know, during, after, or even, you know, be, uh, before the elections. I think this has been quite a concern, you know, for all of us. Uh, and uh, for that reason, we've always appealed, you know, to the young people to realize that elections are part and parcel of a democratic process. And it should happen. But it should be no recourse for violence. People should go out and support their candidate, let them go out and associate on the voting day, let them go out and vote. And whosoever wins, it is for all of us as young Gambians to rejoice behind the winner and support the individual party or the president's aspirations for the country for the next five years. But, you know, there should not be an avenue you know, actually uh, for, for, for violence. And we have always appealed to young people to realize uh, that they have a stake in this country's development, and no politician should use them for any form of violence or another. Any destruction that we do today, the repercussion will certainly be on us as young people. And as I keep saying, whatever electoral violence we have, we will be perpetrators. Unfortunately, almost all the victims, or majority of the victims, will equally be us as young people. So the appeal will always be let us not allow it to be used, you know, by uh, politicians as tools for violence. The Gambia may not necessarily experience violent conflict or some sort, but Gambians need not to look too far for reference. Electoral violence and political unrest are very common in the continent. We should learn lessons from these and make sure we do not experience conflict. I have had a lot of uh, experience internationally. Uh, especially in conflict-related uh, 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 countries, um, starting from Somalia, um, also tensions or the political unrest in Cote d'Ivoire a couple of years ago. And I was also a victim of that in the sense that uh, I was uh, caught up uh, by some groups uh, at a checkpoint for several hours. So I know what it, has, it can be. It brings down a country and it makes people suffer. I mean, you lose your life. People will lose their lives and livelihoods. And uh, of course, the development of the nation will be retarded. Hello, <laughs> Two thousand and sixteen political impasse exposed a considerable number headed in all directions for the nearest Senegalese border for refuge. 
Um, to, to begin with, I will make reference to uh, the 2016 uh, political imba impasse. Even though, like I said, there was no actual violence, but we can see the, the fear or the, the status quo by then actually halted uh, the education. A lot of students actually fled uh, the country, including myself. I had to stop my studies from MDA and then went into exile or seek refuge in, in, in Senegal. So if that if violence will happen, it will surely um, affect or hurt my studies because I am a final year student and next year by this time I'll be preparing to go to the uh, law school. So if there's violence, then my school schooling will, will, will stop, which uh, I, I don't actually want. If there's anything important to us as people, which we need to treasure and inspire others to cherish for now and for future, it's peace. Post-electoral violence has the tendency of negatively impacting many if not all aspects of our lives, and some, including women, children, and young people, may pay a heavier price, consequently. I am a student, and then I am in my final year. I am looking forward to finishing December, and when you look, the elections are in December 4th. And when you reference to Guinea, for example, we've seen the political atmosphere that led for young people to come out in a violent way and that stopped the education of other young people. Looking at Gambia is a population that is, you know, you have young people that constitute 65% of the population. And these young people at the end of the day, if there is, God forbid, violence, we will be the one affected. Now, where is our stake? That is a very good question that we need to reflect on. As a university student who is a final year, who is hoping to graduate at the end of this semester, I am very vulnerable and also I am a lady. Um, mostly we know in every society, the women are always the vulnerable and the children. So I call and urge on to all Gambians to still preserve the peace that we have as a nation. The differences are normal, but yet we remain as Gambians. <laughs> But politics is impossible. Understand? All those things is politics. That means this thing is no more. Understand? More man see anything that I'm doing, that I make sure that to advocate for peace, to talk about peace to talk to the people about how best we can maintain the peace and protect the peace that we have huh? i am fearful i'm fearful for the fact that if we do not try as much as possible as citizens of this country to ensure that peace prevails pre and post election then we are going to put our health institutions at a huge risk which is not going to be beneficial to us as citizens but also is going to deter our progress as a country as a student my atmosphere is that there might be disunity and conflict post December election and as a girl child when tense, uh, when conflict arises I am part of the most vulnerable sect of society and that makes me fear. We have been tested in 2016 thanks to not just the concerted effort put up by the tactful nature in which everyone played his or her party an ideal scenario will be if we never test it again, even though this may be too much to call for. Should we, as a country, be challenged? Let us all live up to the desired expectation. Put the Gambia and her interests first and have our names, all printed in a country's Guinness Book of Great Sons and Daughters. We face some conflict challenges in our communities. Because we do not dialogue more. When we engage more, especially in intergenerational dialogues, many of our conflicts will be averted.
GRTS election night special, the Gambia votes, 2021 presidential elections, from voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates, as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term facing UDP's Hussein Udabo, GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esa Baipal. Follow the day's polling activities on GRTS TV and radio, as well as vote counting and all breaking issues on election night special, live on GRTS, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls with expert analysis, breaking news and results in quick time from the IEC. We're also streaming all election activities across our social media platforms. Join us on GRT's Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for access to the 2021 presidential elections. Election night special, The Gambia Votes. GRTS election night special, the Gambia votes, 
2021 presidential elections. From voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballots in a crucial poll involving six candidates, as the incumbent Adam Abaro seeks a second term facing UDP's Hussein Udabo, GDC's Mama Kande, PDOI's Halifa Baba Karsala, NUP's Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, and independent candidate Esa Baipal. Follow the day's polling activities on GRT's TV and radio, as well as vote counting and all breaking issues on election night special, live on GRT's, bringing you exclusive coverage of the polls with expert analysis, breaking news and results in quick time from the IEC. We're also streaming all election activities across our social media platforms. Join us on GRT's Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for access to the 2021 presidential elections. Election night special, the Gambia votes. The former director of social statistics, Hasum Sise, historian and author, Kadi Fofana, gender specialist, and Serin Falunjai, statistician. Gentlemen and ladies, welcome back. Uh, before we went on break, Hasum, we were discussing peace in the Gambia, how the Gambia has been peaceful since and shall continue to be peaceful. But now we move on to the political parties, their manifestos. What are these manifestos? Can we dissect them and look at them, each of these political groupings? What do they have for the Gambia? Yes. Oh, oh well, um, um, I have seen in the archives um, the a manifesto of the Gambia Democratic Party of Reverend J.C. Faye for the 1954 elections. So it was on uh, what they call, I mean, full scap. You now you have A4, you know, A4, but in those, you know, days, you had a full scap, uh, you know, I mean, 18 points, or like, like a statement, you know, of intent, I mean, um, you know, which he published. And even before that, in the 47 elections, um, you know, Small, Mr. Small, mm. I, mean, I mean, Edward Francis Small, and the other, you know, six candidates, you know, who vied for the single, um, you know, post, um, electable, you know, post the, mm. I, mean, I, I, mean, I mean, legislative council, mm. also published. Mm. Um, the head office. Modu Jallo? 
Mojalo Adia is the head office. Are you with us? Okay. Great, great. Back to the IEC head office. Result. Oh, for the announcement of the results at the IAC head office. Murjalo is our man down there, if you he can hear us. Okay. Uh, Hazu, you can see on the screen, it looks like the stage is now set. We're expecting the first results from now. It's already been a long night, and there's every reason to believe it's going to be a long one. But hopefully, by the end of the night, we'll have a fair picture of who is going to be at the State House. Whether it's the incumbent president who will remain, or whether someone will come knocking at his door. We can continue the discourse on Hasum. You can pick it up. Uh, yes, on yes. the manifestos. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so really, I mean, I mean, they did back even before the the advent of you know formal political parties in fifty one. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually, um, they were you know mimeographed, you know published in the you know, in the form of pamphlets, and also some of um, some of the parties you know which had, I mean, I mean newsletters. Mm -hmm. Or party newspapers also, you know, serialize. I mean, the manifestos. You know, they are manifestos. Um, the PPP manifesto, for example, um, for the 1960 elections. Um, I mean, was serialized. You know, in the newspapers. Um, the United Party also serialized. You know, their manifesto for the you know 62 elections. Mm -hmm. You know, the very very you know crucial 1962 elections. I mean, I mean, in the newspapers. So really. Um, our political, um, you know, political party manifestos, you can say, are as old as the political party system. Um, you know, statement of, in, you know, intent. Um, I can remember um, for the UP for their manifesto in 1960, and in fact in 1954, where the UP, the Spear Party, was even um, talking about, you know, building. A technical university for this country. Mm -hmm. Now that brings me back to the point I told you earlier in the evening that usually, I mean, um, there is hardly anything new, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in this in these things. Maybe the approach, like first approach, uh, you know, or approaching an issue from a different angle, um, uh, you know. But you know, the key issues have remained the same. The same. You the know, back to the fifties. Mm -hmm. Development. As regards issues. education, mm -hmm. as regards infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, as regards health, environment, even international relations, mm -hmm. because um, for 1954, um, in, in our friend Vice Party, the Gambia Democratic Party, there's a point in this 18-point I mean, manifesto where he was calling for um, the Gambia to sort of have a federation with Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. you know, which, you know, which was quite a surprise, mm -hmm. you know, because the I mean, I mean, you know, popular opinion was, uh, you know, with Senegal, mm -hmm. you know, but a friend, you know, brought out that idea, uh, you know, of, of, of like having a federation, you know, with Sierra Leone and, and mm -hmm. you know, like... I think we had something like that before when we said the same governor with Sierra Leone. Oh, well, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, um, I, I mean, from, from 1816 um, to 1843, I mean, um, the governor general, you know, was based in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. So what you have... Um, I mean, what you had in Batos was like like an administrator. Mm -hmm. Then from 1843 to 1866, we were giving you know sort of independence. Mm -hmm. But you know, in 1866, 
I, I know that was again taken back to Sierra Leone until 19, I mean, 100, when we had our, you know, like our substantive, you know, governor. I mean, I mean, who was no longer answerable to Freetown, to the governor, yes, mm -hmm. to Freetown. Yes. Great, Kadi. The IC is set to announce the results, and as we discussed earlier, most of the people registered are women, so you are the kingmakers. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, well, um, I think I will, I want to address more on what uh, uh, Mr. Pule has said. Mm. said first, and then I will go to the uh, kingmaker scenario, and that's going to happen uh, between now and tomorrow, early hours of the day. Okay. Um, the party manifestos, like, uh, most of the time, when I look at the party manifestos, what I do see is um, women are always at the receiving end. We will give them this, we will give them that. Mm. But you hardly uh, see in their manifestos uh, the structure of the, guy, the kind of government that they're going to come up with mm. when they win the elections and what is at stake for women there or what is the, the share of, of, of the decision-making positions for women. Uh, most of the time the manifestos don't talk, the party manifestos don't talk about that. Mm. And then looking at where we are now, and I think it's, it's about time parties uh, uh, should be more innovative in, in writing their party manifestos to tell electorates uh, really mm. when, they, when they win elections how the composition of their governments are going to be like mm. from the central uh, right down to the local level. Those are things that we will expect to see as women in, in the long run or in the coming subsequent in, uh, elections. Maybe we are already into 2021, but maybe 2026. Uh, that's something we, we will really look forward to. Mm. And the key makers, uh, well, mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's obvious. This is something that is very obvious. And um, uh, I, I, as we go along, we will, we will be able to um, see that because uh, we know it, it's it's something obvious. I don't think I'll have much to say about that. I have already justified that uh, because we we naturally uh, that's who we are uh, supporting, giving support. But then as as we go along, I think I'll also make a special appeal to my fellow women because uh, um, the terrain cannot continue. Uh, mm. Uh, so the trend cannot continue. It's about time uh, for us to say, well, these are the number of uh, women we have in parliament in large numbers at local level. We'll come to all that, but for now we are team makers, and I'm sure. Mm -hmm. and, and what I would want uh, whoever will win this election uh, to, make a pri to make it a priority, to make women issues a priority, because the winner should know that he is voted in because women have contributed significantly uh, to the success from campaign right down to voting. So whoever becomes the winner tonight or tomorrow, I would definitely want uh, our new president or anybody who wins uh, uh, the new president Obviously, if, even if the incumbent win, he will be a new president. New and, and, and the king make, although we are king makers, but I must also appreciate what we have achieved yeah. in terms of women empowerment. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, we have um, a whole ministry yeah. uh, that is given to women, children, and social welfare. And the, you know, if you look at the um, what this ministry uh, kind of uh, embeds, these are things that women are always at the center you talk about children it is us okay. you talk about welfare of everybody it is the women who play a central role in in in, in ensuring that uh, uh, the welfare of, of of families society community is is being is looked after okay. so definitely um so a lot has been achieved, but I think we still need more, and we will continue to demand more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Follow. 
they will continue to demand more. Yes. And we'll continue to give them more. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. before, but before coming on to the issue of women, mm -hmm. Uh, I want to go back to the issue of the manifestos. And as we say, our democracy... Okay, is, uh, sorry, let's, let's move to the IEC. The chair is seated. which is uh, part of the presidential election of 4th December 2021. And we would like to thank all of you for your time and for your effort for being here. Uh, we will start the resource discussion immediately. However, we would like to inform you that we will do the results as they come in, consequency by constituency. So far, uh, we have one result which is already confirmed, and the chairman is a uh, declaration. So may we please uh, put our phones on silence. Thank you. Chairman Young. We now give you the results from Janjambure constituency in the Janjambure administrative area. Adamabaro NPP 657 votes. Useno ANM Dabo UDP 454 votes. Jame Ibrahima Abdullahi, that's Abdullahi Ibrahima Jame NUB 12 votes. Mama Kande GDC 97 votes 
and Halifa Babokar Sala, PDOIS, 21 votes. These results were endorsed by Banna Konjira, agent for GDC, Omar Dem, agent for PDOIS, Ibrahim Abinjai, agent for UDP, and Siaka Jada, agent for NPP. The results were also witnessed and confirmed at the NPP, Jabu Jo, agent for PDOIS, Raji Mamadi Purang, agent for Yang, agent for GDC, and Sai Gazama, or CD Gazama, agent for NUP, and James Baum, agent for ESA by far. Well, those are the results that has been uh, announced at the moment. We will take a break. And as we go on, and as the results continue coming, then we will uh, announce it as it is. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum badingulu mbali kontona. Kabu Ali Gambia Radio and Television Services. President Karte Fayoti Maya Long Kwaketa B Disambakaro Nyin Tilinani 2021. Nakibaru Minnesota Jang Wolem Janjambure Karte Fay Kabiloti. Janjambure constituency. Bitun uh Alata J ten. Maya Longko Wolemu uh Banko President His Excellency Alama Baro, a Karte Kese Oraji. Uh, United Democratic Party, Yemen Londi, ANM Usainu Dabo, Karte Kese Kemenani, Talulu Anin Nani, Ayole Soto. Memo Botaje, Independent Melota Faye Anim Pati Teng, Ika Faye Esa Mbaifal, Karte Kese Tansaba Anin Killing, Ayole Soto. Uh, Mama Kande Meya Lonko, uh, at uh, La Pati O GDC, I Karte Kese Tankonon to Anim Worola Ayola Soto. Yo NUP La Patio, uh, Walanya Tonko, Ibrahim Abdullah Jamme, Waya Karte Kese Tang Anim Flale Soto. Between PDOIS Yemelundi, uh, Walem Khalifa Sala, I Karte Kese Muang and in Killing Nesoto, Nina Ketakibar Ultiman, but a Janjambure, Sate or La Carte Fayoto, Nanina follows Soto Aliajam Badimulu, between Kul Lato Olenyama, between Incitenten, Kakibaro Sindalima, Kankotan Ultro, Alabark. Here is Aladi Musa, Boka in New Setan, Agni New Deglosi Radio, New Lena New Fisi Jartes, Fimnekan in New Indilin, Kibaringa Hamden in New Tukesi, Buntuli Kaibis to Miri. Sandem Carta, a contem Carta, a serum, she what have been done deaf day in Gercacho, see President B, conduct Nila Ritual City Day, she Gohi Janjambure, a Finudore Moy, a NPP, a Kinuta Haval Moy, Adam Abaro, Mom Jerome Beniti, Mary Carta, a Jerome Fuki Carta, a Jerome Yarla Am, UDP, Kinuta Haval Moy, Use Nudabo, Nienti Timir, a Jerome Fuki Carta, a Nienti Carta La Am. Am na ko hamne ni nak taha uti ben pati independent candidate la mui esa mbai fal mom am na fanwari karta ag ben GDC kinyu taha wal mui mama kande juro mnyen fuki karta ag juro mnyar la am NUP kinyu taha wal mui ablai Ibrahim Jamme mom fuki karta ag mnyar la am PDOIS nyu gatal kone doi nyom Khalifa Salla la nyu taha wal mom mnyar fuki karta ag ben la am nyu abal nyenen ñi nga xamne ñu ngi ñu la pato ko ci seeni lak eh a jarama abdullahi cham e musidal gambia min chalmini on do he gambia radio and television services e yotinande on patake mo ganduda boy iwri independent electoral commission e dum woni he sengo o do wote 4 december e dum woni hitande 2021 e alhali on no yaari dum woni wano saare janjambure tundu janjambure eh, NPP Adam Baro eh, o hebi karte temet de jego e eh, chapan de jui he jedidi ANM lawyer usenu dabo temet de nai he chapan de jui e nai independent candidate dumoni esa mbai fal e eh, chapan tati e go kartal GDC mama kande chapan de jenai jamme sapo he didi kartal Eh, doi 
dum woni halifa ababakar salla carte nogas ego ngol do kaytol non signe ngol ko dum woni chairman independent electoral commission ali momor njaay Emete kati Ibrahim ba assalamu alaikum bukanoli kam midi bu jongo rob de television eti mo fameti gambia ku ken kondi ka yenti no rak radio eti mo fameti gambia wol koko de safu jati yes be ke rinyenu ele bete male fiken finkin emite o yeti 2021 bang anifana eti independent anuma njum o ko ne miss adam baro pati eti npp ku jumeno na baba ba mal bone sike me konoro bu kan ku gaba bu tinken de sigaba an ko ne enm u senu dabo Pati yeti UDP mna ju moro ju moro aju mutu de kare skete pati kare so esamba ifal achila ba mal bone kabanan unyen dio kon na baje ankone mama kan Abdullahi Ibrahim Jame pati yeti NUP kwa ku jume nome na ba ba mal bone unyen di sigaba di anumanjum okonem um, Halifa Ababakar Sal na ba ba mal bone kabanan dio kon de mo fameti janjamburi central river region mo 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 anifana eti ic ay senumi banja ci la fa mare moda ko ni naga bismillah kata jamane ke television ka horenga nangirti ic gol nyan kankay xibaru njope nalli o ga xibaru ngutu garanga ti no kobe no nyani janjamburi economy kam ma kengani president adam kebe sigindi kengani loya usenu dabo ara kamo na gati tankara gedo ko chuncu na gati akita Esamba ifal, ai manchi kiti duai independent candidate nyani, ada tangi kero kochi hunju baane akita, mama kande jidi sigara kebe sigendi, ada tangka bero kochi hunju nyeri akita, national unity party kengani abdulai ibrahim jame, ada kochi hunju tamiro hilu akita, doi pido ai sigara kebe sigendi, abiram be kebe gara sinya turu kenyani chiaman ngati ic alu momorunjai, keno kondi ukwanya kibarunga angat nanto gara hibeno jopa di janja mure bainga. Kau dah kau dome urut ke kute mu manciri uat ni wasagan dan dapat ni kata aisi kanwar. Haji and the rest of the announcements in the national languages. Uh, we've just seen the results for Janjambure constituency. Mm -hmm. Esa? Yes. It is live on the dashboard. Uh, very good. Like, uh, mm. uh, as you can see, we have received the uh, post results from the IEC, like you said. And uh, it is coming from the Janjambure administrative area. We did promise this will be updating in real. Look at ANM Usenu Dabo of the UDP, 454 votes. 36% of the uh, votes in Janjamure constituency. Esam by far the only independent candidate in the race. Mama Kande of the GDC, 97 votes. Jame of the NUP got uh, 12 votes, accounting for 1% of the votes in the Janjamure uh, constituency. And then you have uh, Halifa Salah of uh, DOI, PDOIS, 21 votes. He got 2% uh, of the votes. So we know Janjambure is uh, the smallest constituency uh, as far as the uh, voter population is concerned. So that is the results that we have received so far from the IEC. So you can see on the leaderboard right there, uh, you can see how the parties performed, respective parties and candidates, I should say, uh, performed uh, there. You can see uh, the NPP maximizing it. Yes, the NPP is leading uh, over there, you can see, and then uh, followed by the UDP. The GDC, Independent Candidate Esam Baifal, PDOIS uh, Halifa Baba Katsala, and uh, Abdullah Ibrahima Jame of the NUP. So this is the leaderboard. It will give you an uh, actual uh, picture of how the candidates are performing in terms of uh, graphics. Abdullah, so that is what we have so far. Okay, great. Uh, <coughs> Baba Suare, your yeah, interpretation uh, of the data. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, 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 now, as she rightly mentioned, uh, we have the results of the mm. Now, coming to the statistics I have here, uh, 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 we have a number of 1,600 registered voters in Genjambore. Very good, yeah. Now, uh, the votes cast uh, totals 1,272. Mm. Okay? The total votes cast is. Uh, uh, 1,272. That is uh, translates to represent about 79.5% voter turnout. 79.5% are figures in, in, in decimals. 
We are rounded of everything here. That's why we are seeing here um, uh, SR, SRFAL 31 vote. You see? So, figures here. But what I have here, percent? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Dabo got uh, 30. Um, Esa Mbaifal uh, Jame, uh, this is uh, Abdullah Ibrahim Jame, got 0.94 percent, rounded up to 1 percent, and uh, percent, rounded up to 2 percent. Okay, so this is the uh, where we are right now. Now, in terms of uh, uh, looking at the the entire uh, country, uh, 962,000. 272 votes, okay? This represents just about 0.1 percent, about 0.13 percent of the <laughs> total yeah, of the of the total registered voters compared to the previous election. last election. I don't think there is a all between the something thrown out the turn up, which is a uh, very yes, thank yes. you, Baba. I think I don't need to keep an eye on the voter turnout mm. because based on observations all around, it is. I mean, evident that it would, there be, would be a high voter turnout. But the other thing is the percentage of votes that uh, we have received so far. Because here we're talking of less than 1% of the yeah, votes received so far. 0.113%. So because to go. as we move along, mm. we begin to see a trend. Mm. And that trend, you know, after some point would tend to sort of like stabilize based on the number. I mean, when we get a very, very, very drastic, this is the very, very early result. Mm -hmm. But then we will keep an eye on what proportion of the, you know, uh, votes have been declared. Yeah. So, so the situation is still okay. fluid. Yeah, yeah. It's very early. Well, we've not very started, early. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very, very early stages. Ah, good. Mm -hmm. Kadi? Um, well, um, I think... Uh, I wouldn't be able to say much for now um, because uh, we are yet to see good junk of the time. Every, every election, the first results that we that will be announced is always uh, that of January because of the size. Uh, but like uh, Falu has said, I think we'll be very much interested in, in the voter turnout uh, because I think this year, the, these elections, the voter turnout will be much more better than that of 2016. Uh, looking at what uh, what I saw uh, when during the, the day, uh, we're expecting a higher voter since about the result. It's, it's, it lays the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yes, I, I, I really, um, if you look at it, um, uh, it was really from 1996 mm. that we had, um, we, you know, we started having what looked like a district, you know, a constituency, mm. okay? Uh, and the, because before 96, um, it wasn't like that. In fact, you know, at the beginning, uh, there was only one constituency. That's called Batos. Mm. Okay. Then in 51, we had two, Batos and Combo. Mm. You know, meaning, you know, what is called now the Combo St. Mary, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, division. And then it was in 1960 you know, that the current configurations of um, constituencies, you know, I mean, began to emerge. Because when universal adult suffrage, Oh, um, it was started in 1960. The provinces, then called the protectorate, was divided into 14, only 14, you know, constituencies. Mm. And Batos, you know, the tiny you know, island of, of, Banjul. of, of, of Banjul, as mm. we call it, in, and Batos, the soldier town, mm. you know, four constituencies, mm. you know. Okay, you know, for example, I mean, um, you had Salo. You know, meaning both upper salon, lower salon. Mm. You had Nyani, a constituency called Nyani. So really, from from up to seventy-two, um, you know, we had thirty-six, you know, constituencies, and that format remained until you know ninety-six. You know, when uh, like a regular reform, a, you know, constituency boundary <laughs> reform. I mean, yes, yes. In fact, in the first republic, mm. there used to be a constituency boundary commission. People thought it was meant 
to offset the UP. Mm. Uh, yeah, because Bartos was a UP stronghold. in a stronghold. Mm. So when the PPP guys came to power, mm. uh, you know, they gerrymandered Bartos from five to three. three. Mm. Uh, you know, so uh, I mean, I mean, um, uh, but it wasn't done, you know, by fiat. You know, it was done by, uh, I, mean, I mean, I mean, it was approved by a constituency, mm -hmm. you know, boundaries commission. I mean, I mean, um, to 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 just to make that point. Uh, you know, very clear. So there, there is need to reform these consequences. Some of them are, might be too small, others too big. Is that the reading? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. yes. Well, I mean, I mean, census because you know, I would really want to say story, mm -hmm. which census mm -hmm. it progressively. The first national census was in '63. Mm -hmm. Okay, but even before that. Every five years, there used to be like a straw census, okay? Like the traveling commissioners, you know, would be asked, uh, you know, to give a rough estimate of the populations in, in credit, you know, as a country. Because really, I think the ability of a country mm -hmm. to hold regular census is really a yardstick, you know, for development. And I think, um, you know, we have been very successful in that. That okay. since 1963, we have held census successfully every 10 years. Regularly. Okay, great. Uh, Baba, what is the impact of the new players, Esa and Ablaijan, going by their results? Well, the impact, uh, results. The results. Yes. Mm. Well, uh, whose who's lunch did they eat? Is it the established <laughs> party? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it that of Halifa or GDC or UDP or NPP? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they may eat from all of them. From all of them. From all of them. From all of them. At this stage, we cannot uh, mm. point finger to any of the candidates saying that uh, they may be the aid from this in, in his ball. So, yeah. Okay? Mm. Uh, of course, uh, looking at. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, of course, Tessa is a new candidate. Mm. But uh, compared to Harifa Sala, mm. who has been in the, in the scene since the 80s. For so decades. Mm. Okay? Uh, it has uh, got 31% 31, 31 votes mm. compared to 21 for Harifa. Mm. A, new, a new player, he's a newcomer, mm. but at least he, he, he did better as far as the new players mm. than, than Harifa. Okay. Uh, uh, Jame Abdullah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ibrahim Ajame, of course, uh, is, is uh, again a new player mm -hmm. with only 12 votes. So these two candidates, uh, the new player, they, uh, they, the total votes combined for them is about, uh, about 43, 43 votes. Mm -hmm. They are votes combined. So why is this 43 votes? If they are not contested, mm -hmm. why is this 43 votes going to go? Going to go. Mm -hmm. are, are they going to go to the incumbent? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to go to any of the opposing parties? parties? Candidates, okay. okay. Mm. This is a question which uh, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, we are in a position to answer, to answer. Mm -hmm. as of now. Mm -hmm. So maybe, Father, do you have an answer? Mm. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, I don't think I have an answer, but just to say that mm. I, I think it's all been mm. short of that. This mainly is a two horse race. Yes. Mm. And um, I am not saying that Janjambore is the indicative. Mm. Oh, it's an indication, mm. but based on what we see, basically we are looking at two people mm. or two parties. And um, I tend to believe that for a long, you know, um, going into the night, this is what we would we would get to see. That is within the UDP within and the, the NPP. UDP and NPP, because between the two of them, mm. you're talking of 88% um, of, you know, the, the total vote. Yeah. Okay. So, which shows their dominance of, of, of the political scene. Mm. But I would say the others, I mean, of course, Baba knows as a statistician, mm -hmm. less than 1%, 2% is really insignificant. Insignificant. Okay. Uh, so, I wouldn't say that eating anybody's lunch, but <laughs> if you're eating your lunch, <laughs> it's not be eating you. <laughs> you know, very, mm -hmm. very, very much. But as you say, it is very, very early in the day. Let's wait to see how mm -hmm. things turn out. But considering the history between the UDP and the NPP, formerly they were together, that is Baro and the UDP, would you be saying that they are eating each other's lunch? 
<laughs> they are coming from the same constituency because no, ideologically this, this they look to be the I same. At the beginning, that yes. When you compare this year to the previous elections, mm. the landscape has changed so much. Mm. Because with the exception of GDC and Goy, mm. everything else will, is the coalition that contested the elections against Jan. Mm. So they all are born from the same, they're coming from exactly. the same. Exactly, yeah. So it is them that have split. Mm you know, into the two main and, parties and then the others. Mm. But it is actually the coalition we had in mm. 2016 that is now these two strong people mm. and all the rest are, you know, just um, offshoots. Of, well, everybody is an offshoot of that coalition with the exception of GDC, GDC. and mm. and, and mm. Okay. Yeah. Was that the Sorry, that was, that was, that was, that was, yeah, with that the was. exception of GDC. Mm. So it is that 2016 coalition that is now so would it be a fair assessment to say the coalition couldn't hold? It fragmented along the way. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, with the issue of coalitions, mm -hmm. it really is an agglomeration mm -hmm. of, you know, a party. Okay? Mm -hmm. And really, from the 60s, you know, coming to today, um, the coalitions come, mm. some are electoral, okay? After the elections, uh, you know, uh, they fragment mm. and all the components, you know, I mean, recede, you know, back into their cells. Mm. I mean, some, you know, after winning, okay, you know, can survive, mm. okay, like intact. Um, you know, but generally, I think um, the history of it, you know, coalition in the Gambia mm. has been that uh, they fragment. Mm. You know, I mean, um, the 60, I mean, I mean, you had the Democratic Party mm. and the Congress, you know, forming the DCA, the Democratic Congress Alliance for the 1960 elections. Uh, when, um, you know, the results came out, uh, they were number three. Mm. Uh, I mean, they won one seat. Mm. And it fragmented. Mm. Uh, you know, Jahumpa, you know, went his own way. You know, Reverend Fai went his own way. Mm. And in fact, the only MP who was elected for that, you know, ABJ, mm -hmm. also, he, he, you know, went his own way. You know, and, and, and that has been repeated mm -hmm. um, in the 70s, uh, you know, with the NCP, the UP coalition. Mm. Uh, usually after, I mean, I mean, like the 72 elections, you know, the 70, you know, 70 elections, there was an NCP, the UP, I mean, electoral coalition, you know, after the elections, you know, it receded, mm. you know. So I think, I think that has been history. Had been okay. I mean, it will be our, our, our political leaders are good at forming them, mm -hmm. um, but really, you know, have not been exceptionally good, mm -hmm. you know, in maintaining them. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, has that to do with the complex nature of politics? Because if you look at other countries, maybe not coalitions, but people who were together as friends, they fall out. And it becomes tense. For example, Ghana, Kwame and JB Dankua, Senegal, Laminge and Senghor, Cameroon, Amado Aijob and Paul Bia. You go to recently Malawi, Malawi Bakili Mulesi and Bingo Motorika, Nigeria, uh, Oba Sanjo and Atiuka Abubakar. Mm -hmm. So it's the nature of politics probably. Yes, my take on, 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 on coalitions, mm -hmm. in, in particular in the government context, really in summary, we have a long history of doing that. Mm -hmm. I think it has, you know, been very useful of our democracy. Um, they unite the interested parties, you know, and therefore also, I mean, they bring people together. Also, they have helped to strengthen our multi-party system. Really, a good example would be the 1977 coalition, and even the 2016, you know, coalition. And because now everybody knows, without the 2016 coalition, there would not have been like a regime change. Yes. Okay. So, so really, I, th I think the government experience uh, has been quite, um, you know, good. Um, uh, you form them, you bring interested, uh, you know, parties together, you know, forge uh, like a sort of national consensus uh, around an issue, uh, um, you know, fight the elections. Um, uh, you win, mm. you know, some parts stay in, some parts, you know, move away. Mm. I think likely, you know, personality, mm. you know, classes, mm. you know, that's very, very interesting. Mm. I mean, I mean, I mean, a good example would be, 
you know, the reference fire, I mean, Jahumpa, mm. um, uh, you know, I mean, coalition in 1961, I've just said, mm -hmm. Jahumpa was quite eager. And he had this Nkrumahist, you know, socialist, you know, I mean, I mean, um, you know, the inclinations. Mm. Um, Faye was more of like a, like a Christian Democrat, <laughs> you know, in today's, you know, parlance, mm. you see. And, and there was also this very, very interesting aspect of coalition, which lasted very, very briefly. Mm. But I think it was a very, very um, interesting case. That is the one between the United Party and the PPP. Mm. Uh, but maybe because it was so fleeting, it, it was just like a flash in the pan mm. that it hasn't got you know enough. Um, I mean, historical mention mm. that was just after independence. Mm. You know, the month after independence. Mm. You know, there was this very very sincere attempt to forge national unity and cohesion, so that I mean the UP uh, will uh, you know form. Um, into a coalition with the PPP, mm -hmm. no, but it lasted nearly, I mean, I mean barely 90 days, mm -hmm. and then collapsed. Okay. Yes. Good. Falu, what is the most significant reading as far as these results are to go by? What do you think is new? What is the determiner here? Um, as I said at the, at the for me, it's a two-way race. There is a wild card there, mm -hmm. which I would say a wild card, which is the, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Mama ma, ma Kande. Mm -hmm. But for this SFL, Abdullah Ibrahim Ajame, particularly those two, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure what, what to read into, into the result. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to say a lot about it because we, it's very, very, very early. early. Mm -hmm. If we get to like, mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20 percent of the results in, mm. then we begin to see a trend emerging, and then you can say, well, this is likely, you know, to be. But with Yanjangbore, with I mean, less than one percent of the result, I think let's wait mm. for some more time to see how how things emerge. Okay. Then we come back to manifestos. We were talking about uh, politics, political parties, manifestos. Yes. How could they improve the manifesto? How can they cost them? Like they will come and tell you, we'll build a road, we'll do this, we'll do that. But how are they going to do it? And what is the cost involved? Yes, Usually I those things. We started here. talking mm. about that before, mm. you know, we, we joined the, um, IIS, uh, the police and the IEC. Mm. As, as we say, our democracy is evolving. And as we have seen in other parts of the world, can the, the mic last, go a bit up? The last UK election, I, I was there. Mm. And you could see some of these party manifestos are actually costed. Mm. You have a manifesto, this is what I am going to do. What would it cost? How are you going to finance it? I think if we move to this stage, and here I will call on civil society, Madi Jobate and the others, to hold politicians accountable. Mm. It's not just about coming to us and saying, I'm going to do A, B, C. And at the end of the day, whether you do it or not, nobody, you know, takes says anything. Mm. I believe this is a way or civil society have a very big role to play in this. Mm. Hold them to account. This is what you promised when you were, you know, for us to give you our vote. We've given you our vote, mm. not to wait in actually until elections, but set up processes for making sure that you hold them to account. This is what you said you're going to do. Now, tomorrow, you are president. Tell us what you are going to do and keep monitoring, you know, on, on, uh, that as, as, as we move around. I think if we move into that, then politicians would desist away, I mean, would move away from just making promises. You know, I always say something, Mr. Cizé. Unfortunately, the way politics is seen and interpreted here, in the local language, when somebody tells you, he does a politic, mm -hmm. what does it mean? He is not real. Mm -hmm. He is not saying the <laughs> truth. Is that what politics is? Mm -hmm. I think it's high time we begin to hold politicians to account. Mm -hmm. When you tell me this, it is a social contract between me and you, and I expect you to fulfill that promise. Mm -hmm. So we need to you know, begin to change our thinking of what politics is. It's not about Nahate. Mm -hmm. It's about having a social contract between you and your electorate mm -hmm. and making sure that you put in place systems, processes, you know, etc., to fulfill your promises. Mm. Kani? Yes. Um, I quite agree with, with mm -hmm. both of them and I both rest on what Mr. Sisi has said. Mm -hmm. And 
And now uh, Ms. Nanyai has come up with uh, something that is very, very important and essential because it is always missing. Um, that's why um, sometimes when I look, because sometimes these manifestos, I wouldn't say they are plagiarized or copied from somewhere <laughs> directly or so. But then, you know, what happens is that uh, if you if you do that, um, there is the danger in that because if you copy somebody's manifesto, like you copy Makisal's manifesto and you want to implement that in the Gambia here, one, even though Senegal is the closest country to the Gambia, but there are cultural variations, the resources are different, mm -hmm. the human capital are different. So if we are writing manifestos, our manifestos must um, kind of give an answer to the realities on the ground in the Gambia here. That is one thing. And then how can you, because the manifesto to me is like, what you will do when you become um, a government. A government so if, if the manifesto doesn't have a costing, and how you going to finance that? You want to build roads, you want to empower women, you want to empower, create jobs for, for, for the youths. But how and, and where are you going to get the resources to do that? It's, it's never there, it's never shown. And also, I'll go back to the women issue also, like there are governments, what percentage will be women uh, in terms of um, cabinet representation? What percentage will be, will you give a quota? Because the quota is not created, it's not going to be something that is new. Already UN has the 30% representation, both at cabinet and, and, and parliament level. So how are you going to achieve that as a party? Are you suggesting the manifestos to include something like a shadow government as they do in the UK? Or? Well, that is it. That is that, 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 that's what we need. Because, you know, when you are there, do you want to tell, and like, if you win, now it will take you one month again to come and kind of work on the kind of government that you, you would want to have. It's better you it, let it be in your manifesto mm -hmm. so that when you win, we will know that, well, 30% of the parliamentarians will be women. And this is how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Then um, at local level, this number of uh, women will be, uh, will have this number of female governors, will have this number of female alcalis or chiefs. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that it should be affirmative action because I wouldn't encourage my fellow women to, to, to kind of uh, be um, like, people always lending hand to us. Yeah. We go to the field, uh, but the, the level uh, field, uh, playing field should be created for, for, for us. So that uh, we will know, well, if, this, if we vote for this party X, this is what we are going to gain as women. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, it is never there. So you are not asking for favors, you are asking for opportunities. Yes. Because in, in as much as we want to empower women, I would want to see my fellow women being efficient and, and very impactful in whatever position that they are given. Because, you know, it, this has something to do with lives. You are there to improve lives of people from, let's say, step one at least to step two or half a step. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the competence should be there. Okay. Hasum. Does historical data suggest that women are better politicians or better leaders in the Gambian context? Uh, well, um, they have mm. had a very, very good track record mm. in political office. Better than the men? The cases in which, you know, you really had outstanding women political leaders. Mm. And particularly at the, uh, you know, a nursery level of you know, municipal politics. Mm. You know, I mean, when the Pakistan Council was established um, in 1931, you know, as the first municipal, you know, council in the Gambia, um, you had Cecilia Moore and Hannah Mahoney mm. among the first councillors. And at the time, the Pakistan Council was really a very, very important, I mean, I mean, I mean, institution uh, because it replaced what was called Butterfield. Mm. I mean. Um, you know, before 31, I mean, all the you know, duties that a town council, you know, performed mm -hmm. uh, were done by the butterfly. And, and uh, you know, from registration of births, registration mm -hmm. of deaths, you know, tax collection, you know, I mean, garbage collection, uh, you know, sanitary, I mean, I mean um, you know, work in battles, you know, which have, there was always a problem, you know, market, you know, issues and so on. 
and had women well represented. And if you look at the minutes of the Pakistan Council in those early days, mm -hmm. you see how you know Mrs. Mahoney and Mrs. Moore, like you said, you know, earlier in the evening, how they were so much concerned with uh, child welfare. In fact, two of them, um, uh, during their councillorship, created um, the Mother and Child in Clinic in Lehman Street. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it is still there. You know, it's, you know, it really dates to the 1930s, you know, just to, you know, help mothers and children, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, get you know, access to medical, you know, facilities. And then in the 40s, you know, more women, you know, were, uh, uh, you know, got into the, the council. Uh, but really, it was in 1950s, mm -hmm. with the introduction of party politics, that women also began to really show, you know, their metro in politics. Mostly financing the political parties. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Patos had for a very long time produced, you know, a wealthy core of women. Mm -hmm. you know, these were market women, I mean, market mummies. Mm -hmm. You know, like Mrs. Gabidon, for example, like Mrs. Foster. You know, these were women of means. You know, they send their children to Oxford, you know, to Cambridge, you know, and so on. And when political parties were established in the 50s, in the party founders were usually not, uh, you know, men of means. Mm. So it was these women, uh, you know, who, you know, bankrolled the parties. You know, Sanjali Bojang and Ajafasu Ndingjata, he really helped in the early days of the PPP. PPP. Mm. And then in 1960, you know, Lady Jawara became the first woman to contest mm. for parliamentary seat mm. yeah, for the soldier town ward. And her performance was very, very good. And then, you know, since then, almost in every election, mm. you know, women have participated, um, I mean, to be elected, you know, as MPs, you know, to be elected as councillors, you know, culminating in 82, mm. when Nima Satasani Boyang, you know, got elected into, into parliament, mm. you know, for, um, on, on the ticket of the PPP for, you know, the largest constituency in the country at the time. Mm. So really, so far, you know, so good. I mean, I mean, um, you know, from the record, a woman, you know, government women have, um, you know, proven mm. um, to be quite successful in, in political office. You know, of course, the rest is to listen to mm -hmm. discuss, you know, the vice presidents we have had, you know, since 96 and so on. Are you, yes. are you hoping to see a female president in the near future? Well, uh, I mean, I mean, I'll allow Kadi to, to, okay. I'll, I'll to answer that. Mm. <laughs> Kadi. Well, it, 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 it has been and it will always be my biggest dream. Mm. Uh, looking at the demographic trends, um, it, it's very possible mm. that the time is ripe uh, because having 52%, although I, I am someone who always uh, appreciate um, the support of our male counterparts mm. uh, because I know uh, the reason why Kadi is sitting here is there there are men very strong men behind me who have who contributed immensely to my empowerment and mm. I really appreciate that and will always appreciate that and women also we cannot do we cannot be, do it alone. We need your support. Mm -hmm. But then this is a big dream, and I hope one day uh, mm -hmm. this dream will we will see and will come to reality. In 10 uh, years, 20 years? Well, I'm not, uh, I think 20 years is far, mm -hmm. uh, but I will, not rule out, <laughs> I will not rule out 10 years. 10 years. Because there are women that I know in this country, um, if we give them the necessary support, will make a very good president. Mm. We've seen them, and these are young and dynamic women. Mm. And, and look, uh, women, I don't, uh, if you look at um, every facet of economic development, women are contributing immensely. You asked, uh, you too, you asked a question about the, effic uh, the efficiency of women in leadership position. Mm. I have seen women who revived institutions that were on the verge of collapsing, mm. single-handedly. You know, and, and that shows how, how efficient women can be in, in their leadership roles, you know. Um, so I, 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 I am, it's a dream that I would definitely want to see, although I may not want to vie for any political position, and there are many other women who may... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> talk like myself here, <laughs> but they would need want to be in politics, and we will come to that later. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I know there are women who really have the potential and would make a very good presidential candidate. We nearly had one 2016, mm -hmm. and this year there was somebody in the race, mm -hmm. but wasn't able to make it to the ballot box. Mm. So it, we've started something at least. So there is hope the 10 years is possible, mm. it's very possible. We had one in Liberia, we had another in Malawi. Yes. Did they make any difference? They did because for, for Liberia, you know, Liberia had this terrible civil war, mm. you know. And when this lady came, uh, was able to do so much to restore peace, you know, yes, Alan Joseph Salib, you know, he, he, she was able to restore peace in Liberia. And then the, I think she has already laid a foundation for strong institutions. Mm -hmm. And strong institutions are very important in, in economic development. If you don't have strong institutions, you cannot grow economically. Mm -hmm. And now Liberia is very stable. I wouldn't be able to quote their growth rate, but I think uh, um, she has achieved a lot. 2016, she was here, very instrumental. Um, in in making sure that Gambians had that very peaceful change. Transition. Yes, and I think at the time she was the president of ECOWAS, ECOWAS yes. heads of yes. states. Yes. So that's that's a very big plus. And then we have um, Ban, is it uh, Malawi? Is Joyce, it, Joyce Banda. Joyce Banda. Yeah, who also did very well. And, 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 and I think we have other female presidents who are also very doing very well. You know, I, you know, for us, when we when we lead, we think about everybody. It's everybody that we look at, and it's everything that we look at. So that makes things to connect us. They should, you know. Great, Baba. Do you agree? <laughs> well, uh, well uh, I, I wouldn't defer much from her. Uh, just that uh, uh, just, uh, the dream of a female president mm. in this country, she said it maybe 20 years, maybe too long. Mm. In fact, uh, to me, even 10 years is too long. It's too long. Mm. Okay, uh, I would think maybe you will say by the next election, mm. maybe 2026. Election, at least we we'll come up with a female president. Mm. Of course, there was a, a female presidential aspirant mm -hmm. in 2016, okay, who was uh, then going to run as an independent uh, president of Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Okay, but still, she finally joined the coalition. Mm -hmm. That's the, the current vice president. Uh, the current vice president. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, she's strong, very dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking maybe she's going to she was going to be a candidate this time mm -hmm. also, but uh, it never happened that way. Mm -hmm. But then uh, there were other aspirants, mm -hmm. as I said. There was this Marie mm -hmm. who was an aspirant. Mm -hmm. Of course, she couldn't make it through after the after the, after the nominations. Okay, but then uh, uh, five years is still a long way to long go. Way to go. Mm -hmm. We hope that at least there are more women who try to uh, plan mm -hmm. to enter the race to the State House in 2026. Six. Six. Mm -hmm. And uh, they mm -hmm. work endlessly to ensure so that at least they, they make it to the State House mm -hmm. in 2026. Mm -hmm. Ellen Joseph Salif that you are talking about in Liberia, she is a model, should be a model for uh, women, especially mm. African women. She said when she was coming to power, how Liberia was at the time. Liberia went through civil, civil war. war. Okay. And uh, when she was coming to power, almost Liberia was at a standstill. Mm. Everything was the economy was almost down. Down. Mm -hmm. But she did everything possible. She did hard work. And she was able to lay the, the foundation. And she maintained the peace and stability in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, through her efforts, even the Gambia, that least we should be grateful to her during the impasse. Mm -hmm. Through her efforts, at least we were able to pass through the impasse peacefully 
that of course uh, with the contribution of other partners, mm -hmm. not uh, alone, mm -hmm. there were other uh, artists as well. But then she was then the chair of the Kowata. Mm -hmm. yeah. She was. She was then she the was. chair. Yeah. She was. Mm -hmm. She was leading, leading all, of all the all the uh, negotiations. Mm -hmm. So she is a lady which is a African uh, women try to communicate, mm -hmm. particularly the West African women. Let them come up mm -hmm. into politics. Mm -hmm. Let them aspire for the highest position in government, mm -hmm. that is the presidency. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. Let them not uh, feel like that, that, that. Let them let, let them not. Uh, uh, Settle for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let them not stay away, let them not marginalize themselves. Mm -hmm. Let them come up so that they are capable, okay, they are the majority, and that they can man the position. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I wish and I pray and I hope that by 2026 we have a female candidate who will be vying for state health, entering the race, and they're working towards making sure that she get into state house in 2026. <laughs> how is that? Very pleasing. It's very pleasing. Good to hear. Very, very pleasing. And I look forward to that day. <laughs> and, 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 yes, I, 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 I just wanted to add to um, this. That um, really, um, our pre colonial societies, um, your women play a very, very important role mm. in, in politics and society. Mm. Like among the Mandinka society, for example, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Ngan Simba mm -hmm. is a very, very important leadership role. Mm -hmm. You know, in the in a wall of uh, you know, the I mean, I mean, I mean like in Jolof, mm. I mean, you had the Ilinge, you know, the mm. Queen Mother, mm -hmm. you know, such that um, a war can only be declared. If the Queen Mother signs off, mm -hmm. so really our our pre-colonial societies um, had put a high premium mm -hmm. on women participation in public life. Mm -hmm. But there is also this international context mm -hmm. uh, because really uh, much of the strikes that you know Gambian women have been able to register um, of recent um, came through. The 1973 and 1975, you know, Nairobi, you know, and Copenhagen, I mean, I mean, I mean, United Nations, you know, women's support, mm -hmm. you know, which led to the first international, you know, decade for the empowerment of women. That led to the creation of the Women's Bureau, okay? I mean, I mean, I mean, in 1979. Yeah. And it's important mm -hmm. because some of the pioneer staff of the Bureau, okay, like Nima Sarasani Boja, uh, you know, like Asadunjai Sedi, you know, became very, very important, um, you know, women political, you know, figures in this country. Mm -hmm. So, 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 uh, when you have a combination of favorable internal, uh, international context mm -hmm. and a responsive, uh, you know, local, you know, context and legislation, then I think it's even better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Hazum. I think we need to go on a break. When we come back, we pick it up from there. GRTS election night special, The Gambia Votes, 2021 presidential elections, from voting to counting, get all the details on one place. Over 900,000 Gambian electorate prepare to cast their ballot.
Adiós. Salam Oh, yeah, mama, I'm a 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 m